A very pleasant good evening to you all from the Danbury Ice Arena on a ve rainy Veterans Day outside. The hockey is nice and warm inside the Danbury Ice Arena. Welcome to the Danbury Ice Arena for tonight's matchup between the Danbury Hattricks and the Elmira Mammoth, the first ever matchup between these two franchises. Alongside Jim Cerny, I'm Chris Lynch. And Jim, it was a productive road trip to Carolina last weekend. Yeah, it, you know, uh, Hattricks come away, uh, you know, with multiple points. They got points out of both games. Uh, they won Friday night by the score of five to two. Uh, that was the game Johnny Ruiz with the hat trick for the Hattricks. And then on Saturday, a really, really good game down in Carolina. And that was one, one went to overtime before the Hattricks allowed a power play goal in overtime and, and they lost it two to one. And then there was a wild melee afterwards. And, uh, you know, so there was a lot to kind of dig apart from all that. But the bottom line is Hattricks won their first five games of the regular season. Uh, you know, then they lose a game in overtime, so get a point out of it. And they are sitting pretty right now in first place in the Empire Division. It's a great spot to be where you get games out of, you get points out of every single game you play. And you are, even in the one game you lose, you don't trail until the final ticker. Yeah, goes and, off. yeah. And it was, and listen, it was a good, good hockey game between two really good teams. Brian Wilson was the best guy on the ice. That's exactly that, correct. Yeah, the hat tricks goalie has been terrific to start the season. He'll get the call again tonight. That is a fifth straight start for Brian Wilson between the pipes. He's 3 0 1, a 220 goals against, a 940 save percentage. He had 42 saves on Friday night. He had 41 saves on Saturday. And, you know, he didn't show up in the three stars either night uh, by our good friends down in Carolina, whoever voted for the three stars. Uh, to me, Brian Wilson. Uh, was at least the number one star on Saturday and was at least one of the top three on Friday night. But he'll get the call tonight. He has been really, really good, and as Billy McCurry told us earlier, going to ride the hot hand. You're not exactly uh, going to get an argument from me about how, how excellently <laughs> he performed. So let's transition into the Danbury Hattricks lineup. Dustin Gesso returns. He did not make the trip down to Carolina. Four games, seven goals, seven assists, 14 points. And I'll repeat that first number again. <laughs> Four games. Yeah. yeah. He, he missed the trip to Carolina last week. Obviously, Hattrick's going to use him, uh, you know, especially on Saturday when they only scored once. But uh, Dustin Gesso has been absolutely everything Billy McCurry could have hoped for in the early going. You know, I've said it before, you know, in the first couple weekends of the season. Uh, you know, I think just pure talent Dustin Gesso is as talented as any player in this league right now. When he's got his game going, when his head's on right, he's as good as any player in this league, and he has been all that and more uh, to start the season. And we have a new addition to the lineup for the Hat Tricks. It's on the back end. Xavier Abdella draws in, and he signed the, earlier today. He makes his first appearance with the Hat Tricks, and in fact, he's one of the guys who's going to be getting a start on the blue line tonight. Yeah, so Abdella's an interesting, uh, you know, and another good acquisition. He's a guy that uh, turned pro last year after graduating from Wilkes University. He played three games with the Delaware Thunder, had an assist in three games, uh, and then got a contract in the SPHL, or at least a tryout in the SPHL. He actually made the opening night roster for Birmingham, but only got into one game while he was down there and did get released. And boy, Billy McCreary couldn't have pounced on him quick enough. It's another guy that they feel is an elite guy on the back end for them. You know, since the season started, you know, they brought back Kyle Gonzalez. They brought back Johnny McDonald. A couple of the rookies, Brendan Dowler and Jared Yao, have played outstanding two-way hockey on the blue line. And now you add Abdella to the mix as well. That is really growing into a nice unit. And this is a unit that gets to face off against the Elmira Mammoth for the first ever time. There have been teams in the FPHL in Elmira before. It's a good hockey market. That part of upstate and western New York is a great hockey hotbed. But the Mammoth are a new organization to the FPHL. And despite what their record might indicate, there is some real talent. In fact, Billy McCurry, I overheard him talking to Tyler Noseworthy before the NA3 game today. And Billy noted that there's, they've made some moves recently, and they have more talent than what their record would show, and he's worried about the 
team may be playing down to the level of competition, especially being high on the and high off of the great start to the yeah, season. Yeah, you, you know, you look at this on paper and you say, boy, you know, Danbury should run away with this one, especially in their home arena, right? You know, Danbury's 5-0-1. They're the only team without a regulation loss in the league this season. And then you got Elmira, the expansion team, 0-7-1 yeah. in their first eight games. But that top line, you better watch them. You have a couple guys that our fans may be uh, familiar with because they both have FPHL experience. Yanni Liarakis uh, has been off to a blazing start, and so has Parker Muscal. Those are the guys to watch. Those are the guys that you have to shut down because after them, the depth isn't so great uh, on the Elmira Mammoth roster. They have really leaned heavily on those two. So let's see how Danbury decides to defend them. If they'll go mano a mano, top line against top line against them. If we'll see a certain defense pairing against them. But those are the guys that Danbury's going to have to shut down tonight. And worth noting as well, Trevor Mikucci gets the start in net. He's been around the league. He's been around in different places throughout hockey. He's going to be a bit of a problem to have to solve in net. Yeah, and, and the thing is, he can't do it on his own. Yeah. And he's put in, been put in a position to do it on his own to start the season. He has faced 40 or more sh shots four times already this year, including twice 50 or more shots in a game. That is a tough way to go about your business. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's still a kid, too. He's still finding his way. Yeah. We hear good things about him. It's going to be in a big spot here tonight, you know, against the high-flying Hattricks, who can explode offensively as we saw in their first four home games of the season. Danbury Hattricks are introducing the starting lineup. We'll give it to you very quickly, the home lineup. Dustin Gesso, Luke Richards, and Brendan Sheehan. Xavier Abdella getting the start, along with Brendan Dowler and Brian Wilson in net. They are bringing out Brendan Dowler. Four points through his first five games of the season and really his career in the FPHL. And we'll keep it down with Dre, the public address announcer, and with Herm Sorcher, who will be bringing on the national anthem from the School of Rock. And we're joined by a couple of flag bearers, a couple of veterans, and once more, we thank all of the servicemen and women who have proudly and honorably served the armed forces of the United States of America.
An excellently handled pregame ceremony by the Danbury Hattricks, honoring multiple members of the United States Armed Services. Chuck Welsh, our own Zamboni driver, Jim among them. A phenomenal group of 
fine individuals who have served our nation with distinction and honor. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, of course there's a game to be had tonight and, you know, to be played and points to be had. And, you know, it's a packed crowd tonight at Danbury Arena. But really, this day, this night, not only in Danbury, but throughout this entire country belongs to our veterans. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that the Hattricks organization has, you know, stepped up to honor the veterans as they have tonight. And there, there are a lot of veterans in the yep. crowd, along with a lot of hungry Hattrick fans as well. Happy to see the team back in Danbury tonight. It's a good crowd. It's a good place to be a part of hockey here in Hat City, USA. The Danbury Hattricks. We'll just have one more brief little puck drop. <laughs> Kiddo of one of the leave a vet's kid. Yeah, he's he's not a veteran himself. He no. Would, that youngster would be a rookie right there. Yep, he is a, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that young man would absolutely be a rookie. A jam-packed house. Yeah, great crowd tonight. Yeah, I, I can say personally having worked on trying to bring people in here, we're so happy with the appearance and the turnout here for this evening. Center ice. The game is on. Molivac Takes on the faceoff against Richards, and it goes the Hattrick's way. Hattrick's wearing their specialized black jerseys. The rabbit on the front of it is wearing a red, white, and blue USA hat. Those are going to be auctioned off after the evening's proceedings. And here we go. First possession of the game is up and running. Elmira well, looking to try and generate some offense. They'll put this one against the end boards. Wilson has to... Hold firm, wait, try to put it out to center. It's tipped aside by Luke Richards. No room for them really to operate with. Up to the point, shot save made by Wilson. First shot belongs to Elmira. Abdella will put this one out to the attacking end. Carries to the circle, throws it across a little bit too far for Dustin Gesso. And has to do some work to get it back. Levac will just. Hurl this one in from the red line and have up off of the first line change for the first minute of the game being gone by. Abdullah tries the stretch pass. Gordy Bennell is interrupted. And that's an offside, so we'll just get a face off in center ice. Now we get our first look at Xavier Abdellan. We got to see quite a bit of him. A nice extended shift, a minute 10 worth of Xavier Abdella. So I'm back in his own end. So I'm lead the rush as well. Lead the rush up right wing. And his centering pass to Gesso just was unable to connect. He really can move. He really does have a good bit of skating ability. It's a good mobile defense right now that Billy McCreary's put together. Kuznetsov comes downhill to the circle. Shoot, save made. Rebound on the opposite side. Benell couldn't get there. Kuznetsov stepping in to take Leonard's spot in the lineup. Again, no Stephen Leonard in the lineup as we're going to get an icing called against... Elmira, and back we go into the attacking end for the Hattricks. Yeah, well, Kuznetsov actually is not taking Leonard's place because he returned to the lineup last week in yeah. Carolina. And he scored two goals in That's his right. return to the Hattricks on Friday night, and mm -hmm. he assisted on the only goal, Sheehan's goal, on Saturday night as well. So Kuznetsov yeah. picking right up where he left off last season. Ruiz right off the draw and scores! Holy cow! A beauty of a shot! Wired right upstairs, did it all himself. The captain put a hat trick on the board last weekend and starts off hot tonight. Man, that was some finish by Johnny Ruiz because he's in tight on the goalie there. So there's not a lot to shoot at, but he is able to go bar down from that close. I mean, that is a goal scorer's goal right there, Chris. S number six on the season already for the team captain, Johnny Ruiz. The carrots come flying in. It takes a minute and 34 seconds to get the scoring party started. This is the tradition after the first goal of every game, the carrots come flying out onto the ice. <laughs> so that's that's uh, that's the pause here, if you're new. So, <clears throat> you know, can you, can you script it any better? Nope. Face off, offensive zone, Elmira just iced it. You know, they don't make any changes. Their guys remain on the ice. Johnny goes, he wins the faceoff, collects the puck himself, goes in a couple strides, and then, I mean, that finish was unreal. To be that tight 
and to be get that kind of elevation up and underneath the crossbar, I mean, that is some finish by Johnny Ruiz. And like I said, that is a goal scorer's goal. Yeah, and our good, our good friends, Patrick and Dre, doing the scoring and public address respectively, uh, they like this goal because it's one thing they have to say. There's no assists. There's just <laughs> the goal scorer and the time. Okay, two things. There's no additional things. And scorers really like simple things, as it turns out. Ruiz goes right back out there to take the face off against his numerical counterpart, Brandon Beard. And the hat trick's already cooking with some gasoline. It's a big crowd, and they are very happy with the goal early on. Ruiz to Bennell. Only two assists for Gordy to start off the season. He's played every game. Kuznetsov there for it, wanted to center it. Get, did get it onto Bennell's stick. This will come out to neutral territory. Bennell just got the wrong part of the stick and sent it the wrong direction. Elmira can't get anything off of this. McDonald drops to Lugo. Lugo walks in, takes this on his backhand, dumps it down. Charging in is Jared Yao, a five point Score so far, center, back in, scores! Holy cow, the highlight reel is full and we're not even three minutes into this hockey game. The hat tricks lead two nothing and Tristan Mock throwing a party. What a sweet move that was, huh? Wow, Tristan Mock gets the puck and does a little spinorama backhander right there. I mean, that is a finish. Oh, that is a sweet looking goal. And uh, right now, hat tricks are working out a little perfection. Two shots, two goals. Less than three minutes into the game, and it's 2 0. And I can't even blame the goaltender on either one of those shots. No, no. They're just ludicrous shots. Wow. Jared Yao, stretch pass to Mock. This is not going to be icing. Mock in there, I guess he won the foot race to get there. Oli Venstrom in front, first shot save made, second shot covered up. And now we got a tie up behind the net. Nothing like some good physicality to accompany some goal scoring, mightn't you say? <laughs> uh, you know, Elmira's gotta do something here to try and turn momentum back their way, right? You know, I mean, you don't wanna be embarrassed and here, you know, the hat tricks have gotten off to a, you know, a running start against them. That's Parker Mascal who was talking to the officials about what was up. So that goal will be Mock. Tristan Mock is second of the season. Evan Lugo with the primary assist. And the secondary assist goes to Jared Yao. Everybody chipping in and getting to be a part of the offense. The Dre is announcing it over the loudspeaker system. Backhanded behind the net, swooping in to get there is Dowler. Dips around one defender. Brendan Sheehan charges up, drops to Richards. Walks in, shoots it, nets off its moorings. So the play will be called dead. Only after a little bit more tie up, because why the heck not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, just going back, looking in the book. So the hat tricks have scored in their four home games, right? They scored a minute 10 in, 218 in, a minute two in, and 354 in in their first four games. And then tonight, the first goal came in minute 34 in. This is a team that loves to get off to hot starts. They are so tough to beat in this building. Ruiz out in front to Benell. And now we turn back to what I've deemed Operation Get Gordy a Goal. <laughs> Things are flying all over the place. So hopefully they could. And Gordy's gotten off a couple of really nice shots out in front. Goalies just stopped the last yeah, couple. And then here's the thing Gordy brings so much to the table. Yeah. And, you know, there's been such, a, you know, such a balanced scoring attack for Danbury so far this season that, yeah, you can go, you know, Gordy Bennell, okay, he's still looking for his first goal, but boy, the goals are coming. You know, the hat tricks are scoring bucketfuls of goals so far this season, especially in this arena. Boy, are they tough to play here. Kuznetsov wants the stretch pass, it's through Gordy Bennell, he's gonna win the race to get to this puck first against the end boards. The Mammoth 
will gather up and turn and go. Sorolas, the back turns, gets it to the slot, denied any further advancement. Here comes Mock, already with a highlight goal, shoots this one on rather easy, shunt to the side into the corner, up to the point for Gonzalez, picked off, Lugo keeps this in the attacking end. That is somehow not a hand pass. <laughs> I'm not really sure exactly how that could be called anything else, but um, okay. Play on. Okay. <laughs> Kuznetsov tumbles down, shot, and we're gonna have a penalty. This will be a tripping minor going against Elmira, specifically against Yanni Liarakos. Yeah, and you know, a, a penalty deep in the offensive zone. You know, you have a little something going there on the four check and you take, you know, a penalty like that. Uh, you know, that, that's a tough one to take, especially down two nothing early on. And it looks like Brendan Beard actually is gonna be the guilty party. Yeah, I got that wrong. I got the nine uh, qu not quite correct. It's Beard who goes off. This will be the first power play of the game for either side. And this is the one thing that Danbury really wants to get going. Their power play, they, they were held off the score sheet on the power play in Carolina. Did not have one a power play goal Friday or Saturday. And they're without a power play goal now in three of their last four games. Matrix win the draw, up to the point for Jared Yao. Wanted to center it, back up to the point. Kuznetsov fills the other point spot. Shoots it, goes to the end, boards. Runs into the official, does Sheehan. Kuznetsov to the circle. Wanted to center it, tipped aside. Kuznetsov is there for it. Shoots it, it's wide. Jared Yao on top of it. The goal line extended, out in front, not really there. Stick comes out of Richard's hands and the hat tricks will gather it back up in neutral territory. I like this, you go four forwards, one defenseman. Kuznetsov's gotta be better with the puck there, but boy, he can be a magician running the power play from the blue line as that fourth forward on the power play. Matrix walk it on, drop to Benell, centered across, not there for Sheehan. Mammoth trying to get this one out. They've killed off the first minute of the power play. Wilson sticks it, Gonzalez will come over and pick it up. They'll wait for the team to get going. Benell sweeps through, picks up the puck and will run with it for a bit. Drop to Gonzalez. And that's Johnny Ruiz, he has him. Slaloms through the neutral ice. Runs to the circle, they've got 35 seconds of man advantage time to work with. Centered in front, Benell didn't quite get the backhand. That's gonna bring us to another pause. 14.21 left to go. 31 seconds for the hat tricks to work with on the power play. We are we're gonna take a breather. Hop back in just a second from the Danbury Ice Arena. Brief pause, back in a moment. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're gonna have a fight at center. Oh, back with Come a couple on. of big rights. Dr. Jerry D. Lorenzo is a proud member of the Danbury Hattricks medical team. Stop by and see them on North Street in downtown Danbury. Feeling good is an option. They can get you there. And feeling good are the Hattricks, Chris. Up to nothing. 539 in to period number one. And 31 more seconds remaining on the power play. Good reason to be feeling happy. McDonald well, dropped it for Gonzalez. Passed a little bit too far. This will be flipped into the... Stands, no delay of game, just to tip two guys competing for it. And so we'll play on. Face off in the attacking end, 24 seconds of man advantage time to work with. So we talked about, you know, Danbury, their firepower has come almost exclusively five on five this season at even strength. Their power plays converting at a league low, 8.1%. You know that's going to change over time. There's too much talent out there, but boy, Imagine if they're connecting on the power play with how much they've scored at even strength. They had a game where they scored 12 goals. <laughs> yeah. This team can perform offensive feats. Final 10 seconds. Put it off Benell's skate. Working through, drops it. Brendan Dowler out there. 
put it off the side of the goal. Bunnell out in front. First hack not there. Second hack not there. Bunnell still with it. The power play has expired. And on come the Mammoth, looking to try and generate some offense. One shot on goal so far. Second shot save made. Rebound couldn't control it quite right. It's sitting on the apron of the goal. Wanted the wraparound. And now the Mammoth go to work. Beard out in front. Save made by Wilson. Off his side. Here comes McDonald. He'll give it up forward to Bunnell. Whiffs on it. He'll dump this down. And they'll get some changes for some tired penalty attackers. Long stretch pass, tried to get it ahead for Isaiah Crawford. Wilson will leave it behind for Jared Yao. Ole Venstrom rouses it upwards to Lugo. Lugo runs it forward. Drops it down. Venstrom lost possession of it. Floated up into the rafters. I thought that was going to find its way out of play. It didn't. Venstrom there for it. Tristan Mock has got the highlight goal. Really the most impressive visual goal of the season. Lugo shot saved made. Yao keeps it in, nope. Whiffs on this, the Hattricks will have to reset. That's a good offensive sequence for the Hattricks. Yep, absolutely, and again, it's, it's getting pressure and getting chances from all your lines, right? I mean, that was your third line out there, and yet they controlled the play, kept the puck in the offensive zone as Hattricks ice it right here. But, you know, great to see Evan Lugo back in the lineup. He's off to a real good start this season. Uh, you know, had points in each of the first four games and then was, was ill and unable to make the trip to Carolina last week. So they really missed him in the lineup. He's back in there tonight and took him all of a couple minutes or a few minutes to pick up an assist and keep adding to his point total. That's the fun thing about this team is everybody is scoring and everybody is finding ways to get wins. Lofted high off the glass. This is not going to be icing. Kept in, walks it to the circle, shoots it. Goes wide. Where is it? Elmira's got it. Along the cross running with it is Matthew Bazarin. Worked off it. Dowler, his numerical counterpart. Still hacking away at it. Dowler. It's been a real, real good offseason pickup for the Hattricks. Under 12 minutes to go here in the opening stanza. Chris Lynch, Jim Cerny on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Dowler. Possession of it, Luke Richards. Drop pass, picked up. New guy, Xavier Abdullah. Runs this to the circle, needs some space, throws it to the slot shot. Glove hand save made on the shot by Sheehan. That's a good looking shot. Good looking shot by Sheehan and a real good looking rush led by Abdullah again. Yeah. So, you know, we're getting our first look at him. You know, we, we didn't get to see him in training camp. He wasn't here in training camp. So, you know, this is our first look at him as well. My early impression is, boy, this guy likes to lead the rush, and he's very creative, and he's a really good skater, as you pointed out. He can glide. He can move, and that's a real valid, valuable skill everywhere you go. Bunnell shot scores! Gordy Bunnell, his first goal of the season, and the hat tricks lead it three to nothing. Three goals. Not even halfway through the opening stanza. Holy smokes, this offense is crazy. And Gordy Bennell, boy, you see him look up to the heavens and throw his arms up in the air as if to say, yeah, there we go. And he gets that one. And it, just not a great, I, I didn't think Micucci really played the angle well there. He left a gaping hole inside the post and Gordy Bennell picked his spot. We're actually gonna get a swap in goalie. Yeah. Thomas Proudluck is gonna go into the net, and Trevor Micucci's night is all done. Nine yeah. shots and three goals. Yeah, Micucci came in 0-4-1, a 546 goals against, but an 883 save percentage, which tells you a lot about how well the kid was playing in goal. But boy, he allows three goals on nine shots here, and again, that one I didn't think was a great one. I didn't think he played the angle well at all. And he gets the hook here. And as you mentioned, Thomas Proudlock now will come into the game. He began the season with one expansion team, Mississippi. And he backed up for a couple games there. And now he's appearing in his second game for Elmira, another expansion team. Well, people need players. And he's got his opportunity to come down here and the Quite a spot to come into right now where the hat tricks are cooking 
with the spiciest of gas, and this is uh, this is quite the offensive start for a team that has had a game where they've hung 12 goals up on the board. Yeah, but they're coming off a game in which they were held to one in an overtime loss, so... You know, I'm sure this feels good to Danbury. This feels more like who they are, you know? Yeah. Dictating the pace and putting the puck in the back of the net. Overwhelming offensive pace as well. Try the stretch pass. Interrupted and turned aside by Kodiak White Duck. Mammoth just trying to exit their end of the ice. They're having a hard time with it. Tate Leeson. Slalom through. It's the pass here. This is going to turn into an icing. No. Brian thought, Wilson sure thought it was going to be icing. I thought it was too. Shot on. Yao's there for it. We'll just take the simple release valve to Venstrom. Runs a little bit too far away from him. To the opposing blue line. White duck. Ducks around looking for some room to work with. And he'll just hop off for a line change as we come up on and hit the midway point of the first period. Three goals on the first nine shots of the game. Holy smokes. Abdella. Drop pass. Gesso. Taken away. Good passing by Bazarin to get in there and break it up. He's downhill, shoots it over the crossbar. That's a good ripper. Yeah, that was a good shot. It wasn't on net, but that was a nasty wrist shot right there. A little bit lower, and you can cause some real, real problems with that. Wilson out to play it, simply leave it behind and get back in his own net. As a BU fan, I'm always a little bit scarred by guys trying to play the puck and it going badly. <laughs> this is going to be icing at the far end against the Hattricks. We'll go to a break. We'll take a breather, hop back in just a little bit from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. TK's American Cafe on White Street in Danbury. Stop by TK's, try one of their 76 amazing wings flavors. at www.tksamericancafe.com. And Brian Wilson right on top of things. Sharp save after a faceoff win by Elmira there and a quick shot on goal. Yanni Liarakos had the shot. He's quite a player. We really haven't talked about him that much so far, but he's, he's quite a player. Yeah, he's got at least one point in all eight games. And he's tied for the league-leading goals with Dustin Gesso with seven goals on the season as Danbury ices the puck again. So you're right. And Learakis is a guy, again, Hattrick fans may be familiar with. He's played around for a number of teams. He has 177 FPHL games under his belt, playing for Delaware and Elmira, Port Huron, Columbus, and Watertown, so he's made his way around the league, but he has scored everywhere that he's played. Mammoth come up with it, shoots it, and Wilson came up with the save. It's not exactly a comfortable looking save, but he did make it, and I thought it might have slipped through him. That's Turns out the, he's a better goalie than I thought. Uh, yeah, no, that I mean, it was a sneaky shot by Mo Levac. The, the veteran skated in there, talk about a guy that's played in the league for a long time. He tried to go short side, and Wilson just gave him nothing. Yeah, you know, we talked about how Micucci didn't protect, you know, the post well enough on that goal by Bennell. Well, here, Wilson does the exact opposite. He's all over that post, and Levac couldn't squeeze it through. Brendan Dowler, sort of some punishment. Buck comes to the opposite side for Ruiz, puts it on net. Save made. And he was sliding well too far out yes. of his net. was proud luck, but he got on top of it. He stopped the puck. Yeah, so proud luck. Listen, should be proud luck, I think, after that <laughs> save. But 
he might have made the save. And listen, that's the first one under his belt, you know, first shot he faced. You know, gets him in the game here. Jared Yao steps in. Ruiz looks for the turnaround shot. Save made on the Yao attempt. He's not quite there for it. Throws his weight around. Kuznetsov does. Gonna throw some hits. That drop. Off the boards, looking for somewhere to go with it. Leave back circle, shot save made. That's a good ripper by Stavros Soilis. Yao comes up with it. Another defenseman who is perfectly happy to lead the rush. Benell will hurl this on net off the glass from the red line. Atrix just swapping out players. No harm, no foul. Back looking to try and center it again. Iracos was there for it, but a little too quickly. He's off sides. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, you know, Yao likes leading the rush. Brendan Dowler's willing to do it. Johnny McDonald can lead the rush. Kyle Gonzalez, he's a little bit more of a defensive defenseman, but he'll, he'll lead the rush too. And of course, we're learning that Xavier Abdella certainly likes to lead the rush. If you want really ludicrous offense, you do need blue liners who can jump in and can get shots and set people up to make plays. And Hattricks have a bunch of those guys. Mike Lopez, the extra forward tonight. He's, he's in. Drop first, yeah, his first shift of the night. He yeah. played back-to-back -back games down in Carolina. Circle, here's a chance for Elmira. Save made by Wilson. And his first 10-bell save of the night. Boy, he was so calm. Gave nothing, to, gave nothing away to Tate Leeson, who broke in there. One on none, a defensive breakdown by Danbury in their own end. And Leeson, he made one move, he went to the backhand, and Wilson just wouldn't bite. Big guy got the pads down, and Leeson, Leeson shot it right into the pads. Good draw, one kept in at the point. I'll leave this down a little bit low. Lift on this attempt, throws a check. Dowler, there for it, worked off the puck. Looks for some space. Trying to slide out around it is Dustin Gesso. Joe wanted to center it, not there. You can tell that Elmira really did their scouting report on this line. Two on two the other way. Drop pass for a third. Wants to throw it out in front. Puck sits there. And it knuckled away from Isaiah Crawford's stick. Here comes Sheehan. So with him. Drag, shot, save, made. Where's the puck? It's underneath Proud Luck. That was a good save. That you was. Know, Sheehan, you know, a little toe drag there and drifted from kind of the right wing into the middle of the ice, drifting to his left, and Proudluck went with him and was able to be in proper position to stop that one. Sheehan, who's really gotten off to a nice start. You know, another guy that was added once the season was started. Sheehan's played some real good hockey so far, scored their only goal last Saturday in Carolina. Shot by Yao is shunted aside, Ruiz. Wanted to play the give and go with Benell. It gets interrupted. Back come the Mammoth. Stick to side. White Ducks there for it. Good keep at the blue line. Looks for the redirect. Has to go down to the end boards. Wants to center it up top. Shot on. Kick to side. I don't think Wilson saw it. Hit the post. Great chance. Rang iron. Now yeah, Brandon Beard. He wow. beat Wilson, but he caught iron. That's really, really fortunate for the hat tricks. A deserved goal. Yao throws his weight around. Shot on, save made by Wilson. And this time he actually knew where it was. He'll stop it. And we have six minutes on the dot before first intermission. Now Brian Wilson being a difference maker again. You know, I, I know the hat tricks have run out to the early lead. They're up 3 nothing. It's been a good first period. He's been tested here a few times. And again, when Brian Wilson's at his best, He's upright, he plays big, he gives you so little to shoot at. He's not scrambling, he's very calm, like right there. Perfect positioning, let the puck hit him. Really like what I'm seeing from Brian Wilson to start the season, to Up. start this game and to start the season. Up to Lopez, he'll play this down low. Benstrom's worked off the puck. On a cross, wants the stretch pass. The Iraqos there for it to the circle. Backhand save made by Wilson and into the protective netting over his head. Yep, right off his shoulder. They tried to go up high on the big guy. 
He got his shoulder on it and deflected it up into the netting. There's no panic in him the way that he's playing. No, the way that's that he's exactly it. it. Yeah, and, and goalie coaches and, and people in hockey will, will use the phrase, he's playing a quiet game. You know, there's not this craziness of diving and, you know, the, making electric plays. It's making everything look so simple. Every goalie coach, Matt Voidy, goalie coach for the Hat Tricks, who's also the head coach of the NAHL team, who's on the road. It's a busy weekend for all levels of the Hat Tricks. In fact, the NAHL Junior Hat Tricks are currently leading their game in Johnstown 2-1. to one. As we come in on first intermission in that one, the Pro Hat Tricks leading this one as Venstrom tied up against the end board, still working it up to the point. Dowler just has to retreat to neutralize, so the Hat Tricks will reset. Gesso backwards, kind of a sloppy pass. That sloppy sequence. Here comes Mock, soaring down, maybe a little bit too fast for his stick to keep up with him. <laughs> when he's connecting and flying, it can make some magic happen. He's gotten the highlight goal of the season so far. It just looks so pretty and smooth. Mammoth are on sides, so find its way to the end boards, working for some space. Wanted to shovel it on net from a bad angle. This is Tate Leeson. This is forward. Sheehan. Charging on with it. Gesso dices around. Drop pass. Gonzalez walks it. Wants the wrap around. Didn't have exactly the angle he wanted. Dropped a white duck. Tries to put it on net. It's off the boards. Wants to center it, didn't have the look. Sheehan holds and just runs out of real estate. No clear shot out of the no. last bit of that sequence, but a pretty good offensive sequence, I must say. It was a good offensive sequence, except for the fact that they didn't get a shot on goal, yeah. Yeah, at the very end of it, anyway. Mammoth trying to muscle their way through neutral ice. Can't really do much with it. Having to retreat, Yao will put it across to White Duck. 3.35 now the time remaining. 3 nothing in favor of the hometown Hattricks. We're on Military Appreciations Night. It's Veterans Day throughout the United States. And out in front, pass a little bit too far for the Mammoth. White Duck. We'll put this one up by Benel. Ruiz in pursuit. Racing back to try and get to there. That's out to neutral territory. And Abdullah. No points yet, but he's shown off some real good skating prowess. Puts this one on net, and the right decision by Proud Luck to just cover it up and keep on going. We're going to take one last breather before we hit the intermission. Brief pause back in a little bit from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. For a comfortable stay with great amenities, the only choice is La Quinta by Wyndham right here in Danbury. As for the Hattrick's friends and family rate, you can't beat it. La Quinta. And you have a very special guest coming up in the first intermission, Chris. Yes, we do. Mayor Dean Esposito, the mayor of the great city of Danbury, Connecticut, will be coming on to make an appearance and say a word of thanks to the many great veterans who have served our country so honorably. And I'm sure you can go through the Rolodex of your family, your friends, and everyone who's, I certainly can, and I'm sure you can, yeah, Mr. Absolutely. Cerny. Or all the, my grandfather, for example, served in Korea in an artillery division out of the Vermont National Guard and got reorganized into a group of the California National Guard. That's just how they did that operation in those days. Out in front, backhand save made. Puck is loose on the goal line extended. Mammoth trying to get themselves on the board before intermission. Rakos wants to receive it. Backhand's out in front, stick to side. Venstrom, turn and look for a release valve. Lugo. 
Just runs out of room, just runs into one too many Mammoth out there. It's kind of a funny name, actually, the Elmira Mammoth. It's a singular Mammoth, not a plural. Well, right, it's true. Yeah, just kind of a funny way to try and operate that. I think it's a little bit like the Tampa Bay Lightning. I was just well. thinking Tampa Bay Lightning, Colorado Avalanche. Yeah. I'm a fan of the Boston Bruins, so I'm always thinking of that as that being the standard. Or, there, or, there are 31 other teams. Yeah, that's this. perfectly fair. <laughs> that's perfectly fair. <laughs> this will find its way around the end boards. This is icing going against the uh, Mammoth. And so back we go into the Danbury offensive end of the rink. And we should point out a little housekeeping that Johnny Ruiz has just been given an assist on Gordy Bennell's goal at eight minutes, 30 seconds of the first period. So Bennell's first of the season from Johnny Ruiz, who has two points in tonight's first period. He's up to eight points for the season in his now seventh game played. Six goals, two assists. Coming off the 85-point season a year ago. A wicked, wicked offensive performer. He's picked up exactly where he's left off. Puck comes back out to neutralize. Gonzalez turns over the Hattricks logo, dips around one defender, drop pass to Sheehan, walks on, shoots it, goes off into the end glass. Another defenseman leading another rush and setting up a real good scoring chance. And Gonzal that time it was Gonzalez. Yeah, Gonzalez was the guy who said it was yeah. more defensive minded. Yeah. yeah. So much for that. <laughs> And it's not like these guys aren't defensively responsible either. Yeah, but but they really give you that other that next element. And it's interesting, we should point out, with all these younger defensemen getting opportunities and being in the sixth tonight, and with the addition of Abdella, it's the veteran, Andrew Whalen, who is a, a scratch tonight. He'll draw back into the lineup at some point. I would be unsurprised if he were to re-enter the lineup as early as the very next game, actually. Because well, that's we'll software. Well, we do not do the lineup. We so don't. So I no. will not speak to that. That's fair. <laughs> Ruiz dips around, wants to center it, goes a little bit long. Shot finds its way a little bit forward. Elmira trying to get something out of the offensive work. Does it find its way around the end board? Shot wanted to center it across. Dowler tips to the side. Bennell's there. Ruiz running headlong. Ruiz walks in. Shot blocked aside by Anthony Policino. Mammoth will slalom through the neutral zone. Man goes down. The official yeah, he goes went down, down hard. hard. And he got up slowly. Oh, break chance. Walks in. Shot save made by Wilson. That's Mark. Parker Muscal, who's... 15 points on the season, tied for the league lead. Boy, howdy. And he had a great look. Broken behind the defense, had a great shot at it. Final 20 seconds of the opening period and won the hat tricks, have controlled pretty thoroughly. Elmira trying for another shot, and flutters this one over. Soilus gets that one. Final five seconds, gonna get another look. Yeah, they'll send this one into empty territory, so no. That is the first period, and the Danbury hat tricks look unstoppable at points. Just, just an unbelievable offensive performance. 3 0 at the end of the opening period. Yeah, and to, to Elmira's credit, I thought that they settled down. You know, the early barrage two goals in the first two minutes, 20 seconds, three goals allowed in the first eight and a half minutes of the game. But I thought as the period went on, I thought that they really regrouped well. Uh, and made it a little bit more difficult. Danbury still had the puck, but they weren't getting those grade A scoring opportunities. Meanwhile, at the other end, Elmira was able to get a couple good opportunities. Not a lot, not a lot of sustained pressure, but there were you know, a couple opportunities that they had in tight. And boy, Brian Wilson was sharp each time that he was tested. And uh, listen, a good first period for Danbury, uh, but I thought Elmira came on as that period went on. They definitely have more offensive talent than just nine shots on the board. And Brian Wilson had to make some wonderful saves. And he looks so, you've made this point about him when he's performed very well, which has been the whole season to this point. Uh, yeah. But you're very right about it. He just looks so calm and so in control of himself in the net. He's done yes. such a beautiful job. Again, play, plays a quiet game. That's when he's at his best. And that was another quiet first period 
for Brian Wilson, and the hat tricks are up 3-0. Ruiz is sixth at a minute 34. Tristan Mock with that beautiful spinorama backhand goal at 2.20 from Lugo and Yao. And then at 8.30, Gordy Vanell finds the score sheet his first of the season, and Johnny Ruiz with the assist. And right now the shots, uh, the scoreboard says 13-9 in favor of Danbury. So again, that too speaks to how Elmira came on, I thought, in the second half of the period, limiting Danbury's shots and getting a few of their own as well, coming back the other way. And, uh, you know, uh, Proudluck, Thomas Proudluck came in and stopped all four shots he's, he faced after Trevor Micucci allowed three goals on nine shots and was pulled from the game. We have a special guest who will be joining us right here, the mayor of the great city of Danbury, Connecticut. And a nice address that uh, Mayor Dean Esposito. Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for Chris, coming thank on. thank you so much. What an exciting night, huh? What a fabulous night yes. here in Danbury. The hat tricks are kicking some butt right out of the chute, and we're very proud of them. Very proud. You know, the, the hat tricks being here in Danbury is, is huge for us. It brings the people downtown, it brings pride to the city, and they're doing so well, and I'm so very proud of all of them. And also, on such a great night as well, November 11th, Veterans Day. Veterans Day, and we're honored to hear to have the, the Commissioner of the Veterans Affairs for the State of Connecticut, Tom Soddy, is with us tonight. We're gonna bring him on and welcome him on to say a few words if he so desires as well. Tommy, I just introduced you to the crew. I just wanted, uh, we were talking Veterans Day to here on November 11th, and I'd like you to you know, elaborate on that for us, Tom. Well, Mayor Esposito, first of all, thank you so much. It's great to be here. Hat tricks are winning 3-0, which is awesome, and uh, really appreciate them doing this uh, military appreciation and veterans appreciation night. You know, really, uh, you know, November 11th is not just another day off. It's really a day to honor our veterans, not only our living veterans, but those who have served this country for nearly two and a half centuries, going back to the Revolutionary War. Absolutely. When those Minutemen, you know, stood up against British infantry at Lexington and Concord, all the way up to today, American men and women have stepped forward to serve, and that's why we get to enjoy games like this. The great things of being American the is freedom to the service right, of men Tom? and women in uniform. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. You know, and it is a very special night. Uh, Veterans Day is always a, a very special day for both of us, obviously, but uh, for America. It gives us the rights that we have and those that sacrifice their lives and their time and their efforts to keep us in this uh, a free America. Every day should be Veterans Day. And I, I ask the people out there, if you see a veteran, tip your hat to them and thank them for their service because they deserve every bit of respect that, they, that we can show. Absolutely. You know, Mayor, you, you hit the nail on the head. Every day should be Veterans Day. And so often people ask me, what can they do? What can they do to support veterans beyond thank you? You know, words are great. Ceremonies are amazing to, rep, you know, to recognize the service of our veterans and men and women in uniform but also matching that with actions, supporting veterans programs and services. Danbury does an amazing job, a uh, great partnership here in Danbury uh, with the um, Director of Municipal Veterans Affairs, Danny Hayes. Uh, but also there's so many opportunities around the state. People can volunteer. They can support veterans programs. They can reach out to veterans and listen to their stories. And they can, you know, you know, if there's any issue out there where you see a veteran struggling, please reach out to the Connecticut Department of Veterans Affairs. And I'm going to put my office phone number out there, there which go, is 860 616 3684. If you have a veteran that needs assistance, please call that number and we'll be there to help. I'm so proud of you, Tom, the homegrown Danbarian, and you do what you have to do for the veterans each and every day. And again, I'm so proud of you. You know, the, the people of Danbury should be honored to have the team here. They're kicking some butt. We ask that anyone out there who has an opportunity to come down to the games in person. Uh, we're, you're always invited. The price is right. It's an exciting time here at the, at the ice rink. So come on down and check things out live. Excellent, Mayor. Honored to be here. Let's continue to support our Danbury hat tricks and support our veterans. Thank you. Very good. Wonderful words from head of the Veterans Affairs and also the great mayor of the great city of Danbury, Connecticut. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for the opportunity and great job. Thank you so much. We're so happy to have a great city behind us and supporting this. There you go. Go hat tricks. We're going to take a breather, come back in a little bit with the second period between the hat tricks and the Elmira Mammoth back in just a little bit from the Danbury Ice Arena. 
Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, Beck with a couple on. of big rights. He scores!
Second period just about set to get underway between the Danbury Hattricks and the Elmira Mammoth. A 3-0 advantage for the Hattricks at the end of the opening period. Alongside Jim Cerny, I'm Chris Lynch. And, you're, and Jim, you were correct about how the early stretch of that game, of the first period, belonged fully and completely to Danbury. All three of the goals came in about the first 10 minutes. Elmira did start to pick up the pace, and I'm wondering how well they're going to jump out of the locker room and if they can carry their offensive momentum from the intermission into the second period. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because, you know, as you said, carry their offensive momentum. Well, it's not like they had the puck a lot. Yeah. A, a Danbury still was controlling, uh, you know, puck possession. They still were spending the vast majority of the time in the offensive zone but they weren't getting the, the prime grade A scoring chances. And when they were in the offensive zone, even though that puck was you know, on their stick and they were making passes and plays, they weren't getting the clear shooting lanes. They weren't getting the clear shots. And that's where I thought Elmira was much better. Yes, they, and yes. And then off that, they did have some opportunities offensively as well. But I thought, their defensive structure got better as the period wore on. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens here, uh, you know, in the second period. You know, it could get scrambly for Elmira again if Danbury puts up a quick goal or two and, you know, then 3 nothing all of a sudden starts looking like a rout if you get to 5 nothing. So, you know, this next goal here is, is a big one. If Elmira can get one, and feel good about themselves. You know, they feel good that they may be turning the tide a little bit if they can get that next goal. So let's see what happens here in the second period. Hattrick sending out the Richards Gesso Sheehan line to open things up. The puck is down. We're underway for the second period. And Elmira with the long stretch pass off the board. Shot save made. Puck springs free and a hard tumble into the boards immediately afterwards by Yanni Liarakos. They'll chip this one out. Two on one opportunity for the Hattricks. They'll get this chance on. Walks it, shoots it, scores! 28 seconds! That's all it took. 28 seconds is what it takes to get the Hattricks a 4 nothing advantage. And look who, Dustin Gesso. Well, you know, Dustin Gesso had a pretty quiet first period considering the fact that, you know, the Hattricks were lighting the lamp as they were. But again, that speaks to their depth. And here Gesso gets his opportunity, a two on one, and boy, was he patient. He looked at Richards, he looked at Richards, he looked at Richards, and then he snapped it into the back of the, the, back of the net. His league leading eighth goal of the season. And immediately the Hattricks give one up. They get it back and Elmira finally gets on the scoreboard. That took a few seconds for the proper answer to come on through. Holy smokes, what a quick reply. Yeah, Tate Leeson with the goal there just eight seconds after the Hattricks took a four nothing lead. It is now four to one. Tate Leeson getting behind the Hattrick's defense. And he made a move, Wilson bit, and boy did he have the gaping cage to backhand it into. Leeson, the native from Smith Falls, Ontario. And able to get the Mammoth on the board. It's a great, great sequence. Right off the draw, and following will sound a little bit odd. It's a, ter it's a particularly bad time to give up a goal. Not that there's ever a good time to give up one, but end of periods and immediately after you score. And another chance, breakaway opportunity. Wilson sticks it into neutral territory. They had Tate Leeson breaking in behind the Danbury defense and very nearly a disaster for the Danbury defense. White Duck has to backtrack, get to this one. Uses the net as a shield, loses possession. Goes across the crease, Ole Venstrom, a big Swede. Rolls the pass forward for Jared Yao. Tipped at it. Drop pass. Venstrom winds it. Shoots it. That's the latest offside whistle I've heard in a good long while. He's winding up and shooting. So, 1837 in. and 1837 left, I should say. And we've got two goals already. <laughs> yeah. One per side. Yeah, so Elmira got one right back. So, the, you know, the deficit is still three. The deficit is still three. 
And we'll wait for the official scoring. I'm not sure who sprung Gesso on the two on one, but he took a long headman pass at the red line and then cruised in with Richards on the two on one. Abdella hurls this on from neutral territory. They hurl this deep, Sheehan, and that stick leaves it at the side of the net. Richards in pursuit, not able to do much with it. Wilson plays it behind his net, looks for somewhere to go with it, we will just leave it for a teammate. Ends up on the awaiting stick of the Mammoth. He tries to ole his man, does Brandon Beard. Trips up, does, you know, Richards was tripped, Gesso couldn't quite control that headlong pass. She had not there for it. Ruiz out on the ice. Let his D-man play it, Johnny McDonald. Muscles forward, walks in Sheehan, shoots it wide. McDonald retreats, corrals it. Jesso holds, Ruiz will take it himself. Johnny Ruiz to the circle, curls down. Sheehan winds up, shoots it, save made. McDonald's there for it, hammered at, kept in at the point by Gonzalez. Great diving effort to break that up by Anthony Policino. Shot, slot, save made and sent over. And Johnny Ruiz feeling as though he should have had that goal. And we'll get a breather here for a little bit. Not quite an immediate break. We're still too early in the period. Wouldn't feel that way with all the stuff that has gone down in the early going. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it calmed down a little bit there. Uh, 28 seconds, Gesso is eighth of the season. They have not given an assist yet on that goal, but his league leading eighth of the season. Eight seconds later, Elmira gets on the board. Leeson, his first, he's playing his third game of the season, his first goal, Moscow and Crawford with the helpers there. And for Moscow, that is now a league leading 13 assists on the season. There are some unbelievable players on this Elmira team. Do not let their record fool you. You need to fill out the bottom parts of their lineup a little bit more, but that top unit be really something. Yeah, Ma Moscow and Learakis are, are two legitimate offensive talents. And you saw it there. I mean, that was a beautiful pass Damn. to Leeson on the, on the goal. Handled to himself, Abdella doing some work, trying to muscle this puck through, runs out of possession space. So Ellis. It forward to the red line. Mo Levac on the cross goes through Tristan Mock. Played almost four minutes. Mock runs this headlong. Venstrom with them. Tries to spring Mock and glove hand covered up. Smart play by Proudlock. Yeah, we've talked uh, you know a little bit about who's in the lineup, who's not in the lineup tonight. We haven't mentioned Zach Pamaleon. Uh, the rookie who's really made an impression. A you know, little guy, but with big heart and plays a big game, a physical style and everything. Uh, Pamelaon is serving a one-game suspension for abuse of officials from Saturday night in Carolina. He got involved in some in, in that big melee after the game-winning goal was scored in overtime, and he just went a little too, bit too far, and he's serving a one-game suspension tonight. Also worth noting, Andrew Whalen sitting out tonight's game with injury. So that's why he's not in the lineup. He messaged this to me himself personally. <laughs> so I'm very grateful for our friend being for being so providing of information. And I also like that he's, he's uh, listening to the broadcast, watching the broadcast here. But just so he knows, we get our information from the coach. And, well, the coach didn't tell us that, the, that Andrew was injured. So... <laughs> But certainly we hope Andrew gets better soon, gets yep. back in the lineup. He's a good man. He's a good player, a good stalwart defensive presence on a blue line that is so offensive. Not that it's irresponsibly defensive, no, but no, it, it is a powerful yeah, and, offense. And it's a lot of depth back there. Shot score. 4-2. Parker Muscal walks in, and it's 4-2. We're not even five minutes through the second period. Yeah, Parker Muscal, again, you know, a bit of a breakdown there defensively by the Hattricks. And Muscal, one of those two offensive threats that we've been talking about for Elmira. 
you know, you don't want to give those type of players that kind of opportunity. And he risks it by Brian Wilson. And that is his fourth goal of the season. And yeah, Elmira has made a game of it. It is 4-2 now here in the, early in the second period. Johnny McDonald across the blue line. Hattricks have gotten one goal of their own. Only 28 seconds into the period. Louise in pursuit. They get this one out. Sprinting ahead. This is an icing call going against Elmira. And so we'll retreat to the opposite end of the rink. McDonald comes up to the bench. He'll be sitting. And Elmira has to keep all their guys on. Yeah, again, they tried to sneak a couple guys off, but the referee was right on top of it. <laughs> so the face-off will come into the mammoth zone. That's been, that's been kind of That is a here. common theme in yeah. this league this year. Everyone's trying to sneak icings and sneak changes wherever they possibly can. It happened in the NA3 game that the uh, Danbury Junior Hattricks called earlier against the Long Beach Sharks. Ruiz's shot shunted off into the protective netting. And now after a good long while, we'll finally get that coveted first media time out. Brief pause back in a little bit from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde across the club. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! Well, Litchfield Distillery is the spirit of hard work. The Batchers of Litchfield Distillery, in honor of the early farmers here in Northwest Connecticut, present to you the locally made Litchfield Distillery bourbon, vodka, and gin. You can grab it at the rabbit hole and hoist the barrel with the hat tricks. That is your favorite ad to do. It is, it is, I'll admit it, two seasons of doing that ad and it always makes me smile. They're playing movie trivia. They threw a quote from the magnificent movie Patton up on the board and our friend got a correct reshot. Not much on it. That's blown dead kind of quickly. Yeah, he was juggling that puck. And I think we're going to get a penalty here as well. Wilson was heading off and yeah, we're going to get a penalty going against the Elmira Mammoth. It's a boarding call. But nobody's going off to, nobody's going off. The official signaled it. Yeah, it look, is that? It's Beard. That's Beard, it looks like. It's going to head off. And not to be lost in that play, but a really good job by Thomas McGuire marking Johnny Ruiz. I thought Johnny was going to get a clear shot on goal, but McGuire got his stick in the way, and the puck fluttered on net instead of the snapshot that Johnny wanted. So good play by Thomas McGuire there on the delayed penalty. So they put the penalty up on the board. It's a two minute boarding infraction. Hattricks 0 for 1 so far tonight on the man advantage. Percentage dipped below 8% with the power play miss on the first period. So they're gonna try again. And Elmira's gonna hurl this to the opposite corner of the rink. Elmira is ninth in the league on the penalty kill. They have allowed a league high 10 power play goals, but they've killed them off at 73.7%. .7 Again, ninth in the league. Rung round the dasher, McDonald charges in, puck flies on net after he charges into it. So a minute 23 left to go on the power play after the cover up by goalie Proudlock. And this is this has been noted by us and pretty frequently throughout the stretch, early stretch of the season. This is the one place that you look at on the hat tricks and go, this is the only place that really significantly must improve. Yeah, they, they got to get going on the power play. And they will. Dowler up top. Gonzalez, they have three, you know, two defensemen out there. Dowler. Oh, they have three. Yeah. Dowler's in front of the net. Ruiz, a blast shot blocked aside. 
And that's a brave block taken by the Mammoth, and Wilson will settle this behind his own net, and we'll try this again. Yeah, so I noticed that the second unit now, the, the first unit, they're going one defenseman, four forwards, one defenseman. Second unit, they're going three defensemen, two forwards, but they're putting Dowler in a forward position because he's such a big guy, they're just planting him in front of the net, right in front of the goalie. That's a smart decision for him to take the bumper roll up top, underneath, and a breakaway opportunity for Lance Hamilton. Here he comes on Wilson. What a save by Brian Wilson on the shorthanded breakaway. Denies the Mammoth a goal. Blocker saved by Wilson again. He played that perfectly. He stayed right with the shooter, and the backhand went right into his blocker. Terrific job by Brian Wilson. Jesso lugs his way forward. Yao, eight second shot. Loose puck is finally covered up. And we have four seconds left to go before the hat tricks are 0 for 2 on the man advantage tonight. Yeah, again, a big breakdown on, on the power play by, by Dan Barry. They get bailed out by their goalie, but then they come back the other way, and I like, you, know, you talk about Dowler in front of the net setting the screen. Well, he wasn't on the ice that time, but Sheehan, another really big body, was in front of the net, making it difficult uh, for Proudlock there. I like that. Good draw More one by that. Mock, walks on shot. Oh, trickles aside. Venstrom tries a shot, bad angle. Handcuffs the goaltender, Proudlock, and that expires the remainder of the power play, and so the hat tricks are 0 for 2 on the man advantage so far tonight. Yeah, you know, and again, the best opportunity was to the team that was shorthanded. Can't have that happen. I mean, you're at least very happy that Wilson was able to make his best save of the night on that breakaway chance. And Abdullah tumbles down. The Hattrick fans call a penalty that the officials don't. Benstrom knives around, wants to receive it back. Will work for it himself. Benstrom drops for Mock. Mock looks for somewhere to go with it, wants the wraparound. Tristan Mock already a goal tonight. Mammoth springs a man behind again. Wilson's out, sticks it aside. Mammoth come up for it. Wilson slides back into his net. Stavro Soilis snuck behind to try and make something out of that. Mammoth are cherry picking a bit. Oh, I did more than a bit. And I was just going to say the same thing. They're looking for the home run. They're willing to have fewer players back in the defensive zone to have one hanging out at the red line. And that's exactly what just happened. That's absolutely cherry picking by them on that last sequence. If it works, it works. <laughs> and if it doesn't, it doesn't. I that's mean, fair. You're, you're talking about a team that is minus 32 in goal differential this season. Yeah. But they're trying to jump start, you know, get the offensive. Yeah. We talked about most of their offense comes from two guys. So how are you gonna get other guys going? Well, maybe you take some chances with those home run plays, but your goaltender better be good and you better not get beaten back in your own end. Right now, you're, you're only talking about a two goal game. So they don't need to take major chances right now. By the way, we're getting another power play for the hat tricks. It's Parker Muscal who's going off to sit in the box. So the third opportunity, a man up for Danbury. 0 for 2 on their previous attempts. Yao down to the circle. That's through Gesso. Tim O'Connor trying to kill off some time, keeping the puck here, engaging with three hat tricks. Well, that's a good job by O'Connor. Great job to keep this rolling. Kept in at the point, eats up Yao. He has to retreat back to neutral territory. And that's the first 30 seconds of the power play gone by. A bad turnover. Walks this on, and Wilson has to cover it. Boy, howdy, this power play is just not working right now. Yeah, and, and you know what happens, and it, you know, there are different things we can point to in different sports where this happens. Where sometimes, you know, if it if it's not going well and it, you don't start the season well in a a particular area of the game, you start overthinking it and overpassing it, and, and maybe you lack the confidence to, to make the play, to shoot the puck, to score the goal. And I think that might be where we're at here on the power play right now for Danbury. Eventually, they just gotta let their skill take over. 
because there's so much skill out there on both units. Gonzalez is going to lug this across. Ruiz knifes around one defender, drops it for Venstrom. Proud Luck will swallow it up. We've got about a minute and six seconds in the offensive zone faceoff for the hat tricks. And, and, and look what Billy McCreary is doing here. He is changing things up. This is the first time we've seen Ole Venstrom on the power play, right? So he's out there now with Benell and Ruiz. Again, he's getting a big body in front of the net because Venstrom's a big, big, rangy, lanky guy. You can always use more size on the ring. Puck sits in the crease. Where is it? It's sitting underneath Proud Luck. And the play is blown dead. And, you know, who's right in the middle of that mix there? Gordy Bennell, yeah, but also Ole Venstrom. Venstrom's a tough guy to move out from the middle of the crease. That puck is loose. He's whacking away at it. And a really good job by Proud Luck keeping the puck out of the net. Six foot two, 220 pounds of Swedish hockey playing skill and muscle in Ole Venstrom. Gonzalez walks this on, thought about shooting it, plays it to McDonald. Ruiz, shot, score! Gordy Bunnell, two goals, and the hat tricks snap their misfortune on the power play. It's 5-2 in their favor. So what did I say? I said, you know, at some point, you just got to let your talent flow and make a play, right, to score a goal. And there, Johnny Ruiz was the top of the left circle, and he was directing everything. He was, like, orchestrating all of this as the defensemen were passing back and forth. He gets a touch pass to him. The puck flies off his stick immediately to Benell, and Benell, between the circles, one times at home, his second goal of the night, and indeed, the hat tricks break through on the power play, their first power play goal in three games, and they are up five to two. Quite a sequence, and they needed to score a power play goal here. They're now one for three on the evening, and that's the one thing that they needed to improve, and they pay it off, and that's a great, great sign up by three. Elmira has already shown the ability to sneak behind the Danbury defense and make them pay for defensive lapses, shot on save made by Wilson. Sits in the circle, race to it. Hattricks are gonna get on top of this and clear it. Lopez, forward with it. Jesso will drop it, shot, save, lose. Lopez shoots it, not there. Jesso gets on top of it, tries the wrap. Doesn't have the space to work with. And Mike Lopez getting in on the offensive fun. Not paid off with a goal yet, but certainly creating offense. They're announcing the scoring on Gordy Bennell's goal. Gesso, one man to try and get around, second man joins in on it. This is gonna be a penalty against the hat tricks. It's gonna Wilson be Gesso. Wilson sticks aside, yeah. It's Gesso who's called for it. It was a high stick and it was accidental but it's a high stick, and now Gesso complaining to the official. Richards will escort him to the box. We'll sort it out, and we'll take a break with the Hattricks leading 5-2, to 9.27 to play in the second period. Well, before we resume playing hockey, the hat tricks going to take a brief moment to honor some of the uh, many veterans who are here in attendance. The 
playing of God Bless America. Nine twenty-seven left to go here in the second period between the Hat Tricks and the Elmira Mammoth, and the Mammoth about to have a power play opportunity and a chance to get back in. And this is your one concern about the Hat Tricks is that they have given their opposition chances to climb back into games. Did so the second game against Binghamton, and Elmira's already cut a four-goal deficit in half and has a chance to cut into it here. Well, they did cut it in half, but of course now it's back up to a three-goal deficit. See what the hat tricks can do here on the penalty kill. Sixth in the league on the kill are the hat tricks. It'll be good practice for their special teams. To, <laughs> they've accomplished the goal of getting a goal on one side, on the power play side, and Gonzalez will flip this into. Actually, he sent this out of play. He put it directly into the I beam that supports the 200 level of seats. So did it hit the glass? It, I don't think it did. I think the referee, referee yeah, it's going to be a delay of game. And boy, this is a golden opportunity for Elmira. They'll have a minute 41 worth of a five on three power play. Keep in mind, they are ninth in the league on the power play. So they've struggled on the man advantage, connecting at only 11.1%. But this is a big opportunity. Face off here to the right of Brian Wilson. They've got the big guns out there, trailing by three. This is their chance to really get back in the game. A minute and 41 of five on three skating. Hat trick sending out Abdullah, McDonald, and Benell to do the honors of killing this. And of course, asking Brian Wilson to do an awful lot. Seesaws, looks for a shot from a bad angle, sits right around, tries the wrap. Gathered up, lines up, drop, caught the heel of the stick on the shot, did Leo Rocco's. Steps in, drops it, lines up, blast, good block. Johnny McDonald, that's a brave block. That is a brave block. Across the circle. The Iraqos, the second time, really didn't get much. Yeah, he healed it again. Top of the circle, walks in, cuts around, shot save made by Wilson. They'll try it up top again. Winds up for the blast, puts it down to the goal line, extended. Scal, the Iraqos. Pass goes across the open net. 35 seconds left on the first penalty. Clears here, had an open net, couldn't quite corral it. Soilis had a good look. Moscow walks in, scores. They killed off almost all of the five on three power play sequence, only to give up a goal with 42 seconds left to go on the Gonzalez penalty, and it's 5-3. And it's Moscow again, his second of the night, fifth of the season. And now they still have 42 seconds to go on the second penalty. So the power play stays out there. That's what makes, you know, the five on three, what makes it, you know, so frightening if you're the one killing it off is you give up a goal on the first penalty. Now they still have time left on the clock and a chance to get another one. 35 seconds to go on the man advantage. Wilson corrals it, passes for Dowler. Mammoth keep it in. They'll clear it out to neutral territory. Uh, that, would, that was a good block right there, and the puck carries down the length of the ice. So that'll kill a lot of this power play. Just 15 seconds left. On come the Mammoth. Moscow, drop pass, thrown across into the skates. Awaiting shot, scores. 
eight seconds left on the power play, and the Elmira Mammoth have cut this down to a one goal deficit with 7.16 to go here in the second period. And it's Moscow yeah. again. His third goal of the period, his second on this five on three power play. He scored on both ends of it. The Gesso penalty, then the Gonzalez penalty, and what was once a four nothing game is now five for Danbury. Yeah, this has been uh, this has been a bit concerning where you knew the Mammoth had an awful lot of talent on the top line, and this really is one of the things that Billy McCreary was concerned about that could happen is the is the Mammoth could sneak up on you. And after a really emotionally challenging road trip in Carolina and physically challenging as well against a great team of the Thunderbirds, Hattricks trying to find some pep in their step and get themselves back and going. And they get a bit of a gift. No icing. Yeah, that, puck, that puck slowed down. And because Johnny McDonald slowed down getting to it, icing was waved off. Now it comes back the other way and icing's called. And that is not sitting too well with the people on the Danbury hat trick bench right now. That's an unfortunate sequencing, but that is the rule. It's up to official discretion, and the official has the right to make that call and does so at his leisure. Tate Leeson out to take the draw against Luke Richards. That's one other underrated piece of the mammoth here. They've done a great job in the face-off dot in the last couple of sequences. Tied up against the boards, four players stapled here, still muscling it along. Moscow puts it off, that hit iron. Flips it up to neutral, Gesso will come down with it. Justin Gesso, drop pass to the circle, walks on, shoots it, rebound, net is wide open. They can't put it down. They are going to get a power play out of this though. Boy, howdy. Yeah, Kuznetsov came flying down the right wing, wristed one high off the goaltender's arm or chest, and Gesso was crashing the crease. Puck was bouncing, but it was coming his way, and before he could do anything about it, he got hauled to the ice by Moscow. So right back to the power play, go to the hat tricks. Leading by one with 6.22 to play in the second period. One for three on the man advantage tonight are the hat tricks. They'll put Johnny Ruiz out on the faceoff dot. Mascal has to sit. That's a big loss for the Mammoth. Whatever end of the rink they're playing at. Gordy Bennell walks it down, puts it up top for McDonald. Gonzalez loses and looks as Ruiz winds up for the blast, hits iron. Oh, what a ripper. Just didn't have luck on his side. Yeah, Johnny was hit. in his office for that one timer in the right circle. They want him again. Ruiz worked off the puck. The Mammoth are going to clear this out of play. And that's the. There have been a couple of looks on the Hattrick's power play throughout where they get good shots and they either hit iron or the goalie makes a great save. So that part of it. You can't be that mad about. Uh, nothing you can do about that. And boy, he beat, beat the goalie cleanly. It was a great shot. And it's right where Johnny loves it. The wheelhouse in the right circle. Richards walks on. Shot save made. Big rebound. Mammoth are going to clear it. They have killed off the first half of the hat trick power play. Trying to keep it right now at a one goal deficit. There's Moscow two for tripping at 13-38. Gesso flips this in, chases his own dump. Carries to the circle, wants it out in front. She in turns, loose puck, and it's covered up. Good play by Proud Luck to get on top of it. Yeah, I, yeah and I like Gesso really crashing the crease again, getting into the dirty area, trying to make something happen. It's good, just good play there by Proud Luck. 5.04 to go here in the second period, 42 seconds of power play time. Sheehan steps in to takes the draw, put it up to the point because Netsov gives to Yao, keeps it on, it's a good keep. Gesso, up for Yao, it skitters aside. 
Under 30 seconds to go on this power play. Richards. Sheehan. Cross to Gesso, sneaks under his stick. And the Mammoth will clear this out. Matrix fans and team calls a penalty. The other team does not. We have a man <laughs> down. More, more importantly, the officials did not call a penalty. Yep. Fans can call all the penalties they want. Doesn't yeah. make that much of a difference. And we get a lot of... We'll take a media timeout, hop back with 10 seconds left to go on this hat trick power play. Brief pause back in a minute from the Danbury Ice Arena. They're playing a uh, really fun uh, video promotion with a holiday diner that we just got to go and record. and Gave us a good lunch as well. It's very tasty. I, I wasn't watching too closely. I, I, I saw Frankie McClendon. Yeah, it was Frankie, Johnny, and Luke Richards. Uh, that's great. That was a good crowd of people to go and uh, <laughs> go and enjoy a good milkshake with. <laughs> and also... Uh, George at the Holiday Diner gave us a good, tasty burger as well. Oh, nice. I've had the burgers there. Yes. And I've had a milkshake there, too. Yeah. And I got to say the required Samuel L. Jackson line of, this is a tasty burger. Yeah, nice. <laughs> that is required, it feels like. Well, if it's Wherever tasty. Wherever you go. If it is tasty, yes. And good for me. Twas tasty. Like it. Yes. 3.35 left to go here in the second period. The Danbury Hat Tricks. Up only one goal after being up by four. Lugo's shot trickles wide. Benell out there. That coach, Billy McCreary, has thrown his lines into a blender. Venstrom, Lugo, Benell out there. Oh, he got a two-on-one chance for the Mammoth. Chance to tie it. Walks in. Looks to center it. Not there. And diving across to break that up. Johnny McDonald. Yeah, Wilson might have gotten a sticker or a pad in the way, too. Thought Wilson really hung to the post there well. Puck sits in the crease, kicked aside by Gonzalez. Sits against the end board, Solomon to try and get somewhere as Soilus. Shot save made, can't get it out of their own end. The Mammoth have really come to play here in the second period. Winds up, shoots it, can't get that one through. 2.30 left to go here in the second period. And I don't really want to be in the locker room with Billy McCreary after this period when it comes to a conclusion. Circle shot, great block. Great Johnny, hustle. Johnny McDonald again. That is the second time he's done that this period. Such a tough, tough player. Poke this one out to neutral ice. Ole Venstrom's there for it. Waiting for a second man to join him. McDonald walks in. Back to Venstrom and eats him up. Lopez out there as well. Puck comes to neutral ice. Yao will give it on back to Johnny Ruiz. A great opportunity, and they can't really pay it off. Nope, uh, they couldn't, and those were guys that had been out there a long time. That was a long shift. Much of it spent back in their own end of the ice. And it looked like a tired two-on-one, to be honest. It was. Lopez to Ruiz, shot save made, loose puck. The Mammoth will get out of their own end. Dakota Seaman runs this forward, thrown across to the circle. Ole's one man shoots it, bad angle on Wilson. He makes the save, and we have a minute and 24 left here in the second period. We didn't uh, give you the scoring on the last two goals. 
Elmira, 12 9 a five on three power play goal. It was Moscow, second of the game, fifth of the season from Soilis. And then at 12.44, a five on four power play goal for Elmira. Muscal again, sixth of the season, third of the game. And Beard got one assist, and Leah Rockus got the second assist. We've got a penalty. We have a man down behind the net. I didn't see that at all, but he's down hard. And Xavier Abdella is signaling to have the trainer come out. It's one of the mammoth players that went down and went down hard behind the net. He is up now on his own. And we'll have a little conversation. That's Isaiah Crawford. We'll have a little conversation with the trainer, but the good news is that he's able to make it to the bench by himself. The bad news for Danbury is that Xavier Abdella is going off for what I think is probably going to amount to a two-minute minor. I'm waiting for the official ruling. Oh, well, Myra is already two for two on the power play. They got two goals on the five-on-three sequence to start and then the five-on-four that resulted from it afterwards. Yep, I cashed in on both ends of it. And hey, you know, this is a one-goal game right now. What did I say when it was 5-2? I said, hey, you know, two-man advantage, you get a goal or two goals here, it's a game. Well, even more so now, this is a critical kill for the hat tricks. Ultimate. And it is a double minor. And they have... They have Gonzalez's number up there, but it's Abdella that's in the box. They've corrected it now on the board, so Xavier Abdella, the Albany, New York native, has to sit for... Actually, they've changed the oh. timing on that as well. It's a not a double minor anymore. It's just a regular two-minute power play, and well, now, now they're adjusting it. There oh, they go. Now, it's now they've put it back up to yeah. the four-minute mark. Okay. So it's a high-sticking double minor against Abdella. And extended power play opportunities have been a real big problem for the hat tricks in this period. We're at the last minute of the frame. The hat tricks just trying to survive and get themselves into the intermission with this lead if they can. Lugo will carry this out. Three on three, just slaloming and will take his time. 40 seconds left to go in the second. Tries the outlet, not really there. Muscal works his way through. Offsides, that's a bad offsides. Yep, with 30.1 seconds remaining in the period. 316 on the double minor, so, you know, they're gonna have power play time too at the beginning of the third period. And assuming it's still a one goal game, you get a fresh sheet of ice. And that's a big advantage for Elmira as well. 30.1 seconds to be played. Ruiz out to take the draw against Mo Levac. Ruiz kicks this on. They're turning this into a two on one. Across for Ruiz. Great breakup by Leo Rocos. Holy smokes. A great defensive play to blow that up. Hatrick still on the prowl. Can't do anything more with it. Final 10 seconds. Mammoth trying to catch the Hattricks defense asleep. Burning down to five. Can they get anything out of this? Hattricks will send the puck into the corner and just keep it there. Yao trading blouse. And now we got a good tie up. Tumbles down to the circle. And that is how we go into the intermission. And now we got a secondary fight going on. Gesso. Trading punches. God, oh, Jesso's on the receiving end. Oh. He kept his gloves on. Yeah. His helmet came off. Yeah, Muscal knocked his wow. helmet off. And Jesso, trying to show some restraint, kept his gloves on. And now Jared Yao trying to get the crowd going. Jared Yao stepped in because Stavros Soilis really ran Johnny Ruiz hard into the wall. And Yao at the buzzer went after him. And now Moscow and Gesso being separated by the linesman. 
And Jesso is heading to the dressing room. So we'll see how this gets sorted out. Again, it began with Soilis and the hit on Ruiz. Ruiz dropped to a knee. And I don't know if there was going to be a penalty call there, but clearly Yao didn't like what he saw. And he went to the defense of his captain. So it's, it's just an unnecessary sequence right at the end of the period. Yeah, yep. Like you just get it done and you got two minutes forty five seconds of power play time and you could mess that up. Alternately the hat tricks could be down a man for longer. Which and considering a double minor, you could be. It depends on how this ends up shaking out. It could just stay for the most part, as is, you could give matchings to people. But. And Moscow now is trying to explain something to the linesman. He's been standing along the red line the entire time. A little bit of chirping with several of the hat tricks. And now Danbury is finally heading off the ice. Captain Johnny Ruiz is explaining something to Coach Billy McCreary. Johnny, Johnny's not leaving. I think he wants to see if there's going to be a penalty on Soilus. McCreary remains behind the bench. The assistants are walking off the ice. And we're waiting for all this to be figured out. Assistant John Kropinski and assistant Steve Brown walk with player assistant coach Johnny Ruiz. He wears the C and deservedly so. So Moscow is still on the ice and he's doing like a chopping motion with his right hand to his left hand. So I don't know if he's saying that he got slashed. No, the referees are going to head to their dressing room. And now Coach Glenn Tamaris is on the ice at center ice, giving an earful to the linesman and to the referee. He's not happy. He's not happy about what they're calling, which it tells you that there's going to be a penalty against it. And also, by the way, being shunted off to the side is Parker Muscal. He's being ushered by one of the trainers to go off and head to the locker room. Yeah, because he could be getting himself into further trouble as well. And now there's one guy remaining on the bench, and that's Billy McCreary, and he's seeking an explanation at the bench. Well, he gets it. And now the officials are heading off, and I guess we'll find out shortly, or hopefully shortly, how this all is going to be sorted out. So, so Danbury was up 4 nothing. an early goal 28 seconds into the second period, put them up 4 nothing. That lead has been whittled down to 5-4, and they're going to be most likely, depending on how the penalties are sorted out. We've got those penalties right now, actually. All right, here you go. Let's hear it. Danbury with matching roughing minors assessed to Dustin Gesso and Jared Yao and Elmira. Matching roughing minors assessed to Parker Muscal and Stavros so, uh, Soilis. So, so it's go. four roughing penalties, two to each side. They're all matching. They'll be served together so the result of all this on the power play is that the mammoth are still going to be on the power play for the next two minutes and 45 seconds worth of the game when the third period of regulation begins right and, and that's the most important thing and all i can imagine is moscow again he was doing something with the chopping motion so i i interpret that all the way up here not knowing what's being said as maybe he felt he got slashed somewhere along the line and maybe he was wondering why Danbury wasn't getting an extra minor or something. Again, we're just guessing here, but yeah. uh, you know, it's like playing charades, trying to figure out what, what's going on down there. But the bottom line is, as you read off the penalties, it all gets evened off. The only thing that matters is there's still three plus minutes of power play time for the Elmira Mammoth to begin the third period of play. And by the way, we haven't really said this that much throughout the course of the period, but we really should note it again. Parker Mescal had a hat trick in the second period. Yes, he did. Two goals on the power play, three goals overall, and oh yeah, he assisted on the other goal. A four-point, not just a four-point night, a four-point period for Parker Mescal. Of course, Johnny Ruiz doing his best on the other side of the ledger. He's got himself a goal and two assists 
to lead Danbury tonight. And of course, Gordy Bennell with two goals. However this game works out, uh, there's no way you can keep Mascal off the list of the stars or the list of the best performing players. He's been <laughs> phenomenal. <No>. Absolutely. <laughs> Whenever hey, I've, I've been so impressed, yeah. uh, you know, with him again, He's the guy now you got a key on. You, you see that the offense runs through him. So on this power play coming up, or the rest of it, at the beginning of the third period, that's the guy that Danbury is going to have to uh, key on because everything is running through him on the power play. Well, after all that discussion, the result of all this, it's 5-4 Danbury in the second intermission. We're going to take a breather. We'll come back with the third and final period of regulation time. Chris Lynch and Jim Cerny on the call for you from Hat City, USA. The Danbury Hat Tricks in the lead, but certainly not feeling that comfortable. Elmira going to have an extended power play after we come back. Brief pause back in a bit with the third and final period of regulation time here on the Danbury Hat Tricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde drops the puck. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores!
The team's returning to the ice. A fresh 20 minutes up on the board. 5-4, the Danbury Hattricks hold the lead, and they are just barely holding on to it. Welcome on board for the third and final period of regulation time between the Hattricks and the Elmira Mammoth. Alongside Jim Cerny, I'm Chris Lynch. And Jim, uh, no way around it. That was kind of a messy second period for the Hattricks. Yeah, you, you, you thought that, you know, they had the opportunity there to just bury Elmira, you know. Uh, you know, Danbury comes into the game with the best points percentage in the league, 83.3%. Elmira, winless. They've never won a game yet, it, it, you know, in their inaugural season, 07-1. And, and Danbury puts up a three spot in the first. They score 28 seconds into the second. And you're thinking, you know, if you're a Danbury fan, you're thinking, boy, this is looking good. And then, boy, everything turned around. And then with Elmira scoring on both ends of that two-man advantage, the five on three and then the five on four. We got ourselves a one-goal game, and they still have two minutes, 45 seconds of an extended four-minute double minor penalty uh, right now. So they still have that power play going for them, and this is, you know, there are 20 minutes to play, but this could be a real deciding point in the game. Certainly, a crucial moment right now, crucial time for both teams right here, this power play for Elmira. And by the way, it's a crowded penalty box for both yeah. sides. Two guys in the box for the Mama, three guys in the box for the Hattricks. There's the one penalty being served, the double minor being served by Xavier Abdella, and then four guys sitting for matching roughing minors, yeah. four of them all at the 20 minute mark. And the key guy in that box out of all five that are in there is Parker Muscal. He's got to serve a two minute roughing penalty, meaning that he won't be out there for the full 245 of this power play. And he's the guy that has two power play goals tonight. Hattricks win the face off and we are underway for the third and final period of regulation time. They are just now announcing the penalties. It's the only time they possibly could. Glides in, thrown across, circle shot, save made by Wilson. Gathers up, another chance, save made. Wilson and Bennell combined to cover up that puck. Then in the first 25 seconds of the third period, the Mammoth are already on the prowl. Yeah, absolutely. Tate Leeson came flying in, good scoring opportunity. Wilson had good positioning on it, but left a big rebound out there. Elmira is able to get a second shot off because of that before finally, as you mentioned, he and Benell are able to get the whistle. But two good chances right, on, right out of the hopper here for Elmira, and now off the faceoff, they shoot one directly on net. And Wilson has already made three saves in 28 seconds. 1932 already. Wow, this has been kind of fast in just how much pressure Elmira's been able to generate. This is this was a real concern of Billy McCreary at the outset of tonight's proceedings is that Elmira could give them some problems. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, uh, listen, you know, they came close, uh, you know, a weekend or about a week and a half ago. They lost 6-5 in overtime to Watertown on the road. And they're playing that type game here again tonight. Sheehan pokes this out to neutral territory. One defender to take on. He'll just do the responsible thing, and dump this down instead of trying to play hero puck. Gordy Bennell can't do anything with it. Puck taken off, three on, two the other way. The Mammoth drop to the circle. Now's McDonald, throws his weight into it. Goal line extended, we have a minute and 30 left to go on the double minor. Just to swap spots. Steps down, winds up, blasts it. Great block by Johnny McDonald, his third block. Bennell with another one, and Johnny McDonald is limping. Yeah, he is staying out there. Yeah, that took a pound of flesh right there. And wow. G Gordy Bennell flips that into neutral territory, and McDonald is going to limp off. Not after, not until he blocks a couple of unbelievably wicked shots. Oh, boy, that, that one, oof. He went down the first two times. This time he stayed down. Leo Rocco's holds. We have 50 seconds left to go on the Mammoth power play. Lavac walks in, circle shot, save made, and Wilson covers it up. 
keeping an eye on Johnny McDonald and see the trainer with him right now. He's at sitting at the end of the bench right below us. And listen, sometimes it just takes time. Yeah. Ad hurts so much. He took that right in the shins. Or shin, the, the side of the leg, actually, where there wasn't any padding. And he's shaking it off. At least it doesn't seem anything serious. That's so, one of the most painful things you can do in uh, this sport. Yeah, absolutely. Mammoth keep it in at the point. Finds its way to behind the net. Moscow is out of the box, so he's out there now on the five on four for Elmira. Time on the matching roughings is all done. Levac with the tip in front, and Wilson just reads it correctly. We have 23 seconds left to go. This would be a big kill if the Hattricks can come up with it. Brian Wilson with five saves since the beginning of the period. Here on the power play, doing what he needs to do to keep the Hattricks ahead. Lugo takes a good hearty whack at it. This will kill off much of the remaining time. We have 15 seconds left to go. Muscal runs it forward. Muscal across the blue line, thrown across. Five seconds to go on the power play. Try it, shot across the crease, not there. Loose puck, Wilson well up, just has to retreat. And that's that. The hat tricks have successfully killed off the double minor. That's a much, much needed kill. Elmira still pursuing the equalizer. Dowler up to Venstrom, fed it too far ahead. And we'll have an icing and a face off in the Danbury defensive end. Well, they, they, they got the job done. They did what they had to do. Brian Wilson made a couple difficult saves, but for the most part made them look routine. Looks like he's you know, back on track the way he looked in the first period. Again, playing that quiet game. But it, again, it was a break having Muscal in the box. Wilson with the, sh with the save on the big blast. Yeah, it hit him in the, in the mask. <laughs> However you have to save it, I guess. Yeah, he's okay. I was yep. just checking his strap. Yeah, it looks like his strap is loose. He'll be adjusting that next chance he can. I mean, he should be telling the official now. He may not know. I don't think he does. Yeah, because he should not be playing with, you know, the helmet, not, or his mask, absolutely as tight as it could be. Mammoth gained the zone. Wilson with the blocker save. Another kick save. Mammoth have been controlling possession. And finally, play blown dead. And the official noticed it. Yeah. The official noticed that Brian Wilson's helmet was not fully secure. Let's and give credit where credit is due. Who noticed it? The ref. The ref noticed it two minutes after Cerny noticed it. Yes, Jim give Cerny. Give credit where credit is due. Good work, Mr. Cerny. There we go. <laughs> I was on it. The vi vigilance as ever. Yes, I, I'm eagle eye up here. Uh, he, yeah. No harm, no foul. You know, he took that shot off the mask. He's okay. Now he's got the strap fixed. And a face-off win, defensive zone face-off win by Richards. Jesso lugs it forward. Richards in a tree in a forest of mammoth. Yeah, it looked like he got hooked. Walks in, shot not there, save made. Great walk in, great chance for the hat tricks. Good yeah. goaltending. Yep, yep, and it was Richards, and he's a little frustrated. You know, he doesn't have a point in his last three games after that stretch where he had nine points in two games. You had a feeling that that might not be yeah, able to well, keep that, up. That pace would be a little difficult to keep up, but he had good, good scoring chance there. And let's make one other note as well. Thomas Proudluck has played yes. well in net since he entered in relief in the first period. Yeah, a very good point. Ruiz lifts a stick, kicks it free. Kuznetsov was trying to put it on Gordy Bunnell. Bit too fancy on the pass. Just make the simple play. Abdullah tumbles down. This is going to be a penalty. I, I think it's, it's going to be hook. on Leeson. Yes, it is. It's a hooking minor. Yeah against Tate Leeson. Yeah, it was Leeson. 
he, he didn't have position. He was trying to get position to get to the puck and to break in against Wilson. And he just gave a little tug with the stick, and he spun uh, the hat trick defenseman around. I believe that was Abdella. Spun him a little bit with the hook. And that's one of those rare, you're on a partial breakaway, and yet you're the guy that committed the hooking penalty. Don't see that too often, but the official's right on it. And now a big power play for Danbury. I mean, it very clearly was the correct call on that one, so the hat tricks will give the chance to their maligned power play. Just so they have to regroup in neutral territory. Richards walks this in. Down to the goal line extended. Gesso holds, walks this down. McDonald has gotten to his spot at the point. He'll receive it. And good to see McDonald back on the ice. Out in front, wanted the redirect. Shunt to the side, and McDonald will keep this in at the point. Richards again, good redirect in front. Winds up, shoots it. In the forest, where is it? It's under the goalie. So we'll get a dead puck. And I believe we're getting immediate timeout as well. Yes, we are. We all take a breather, hop back in a little bit from the Danbury Ice Arena here on the Danbury Hattricks YouTube channel. Right off the jump, we've got ourselves a line ball. Robert Hyde across the club. We're going to have a fight at center. Oh, oh, back with a couple on. of big rights. He scores! New Haven Nighthawk Brewing is brewed right here in Connecticut and featured at the Rabbit Hole. New Haven Night Brewing Company is the beverage of choice at the Danbury Arena. Grab a cold one and party like you're in the Elm City. And the official merchandiser of the Danbury Hattricks is Vision Designs. Full service screen printing, embroidery, signage, and promotional company locally owned and operated right here in Brookfield. Vision Designs is the hometown company with the national power. Check them out at visiondesignct.com. Hat tricks with a minute and 22 seconds left to go on the power play. Benella shot from a rough angle. Save made and cleared aside. Proud luck. Another good save. Minute and 12 left to go on the man advantage. The hat tricks had four previous power play chances. Have gotten a goal on one of them. Kuznetsov, he haven't called his name all that much tonight. Louise walks this in. Benell joins him. Three players, Benell. Put this up. Donald, no room for it. The seesaw, swap spots. We've got a whistle. The net came off. It's more. Yeah, the net came off the stanchion with 45 seconds ago on the power play. And the hat tricks will change it up. Jesso, Sheehan, Richards up front. Kuznetsov and Yao will be at the points. A little bit of a quiet game for Kuznetsov. Last year, 34 goals, 34 assists, 68 points in 61 games as a rookie. Kuznetsov across. Jared Yao walks in, shoots it, loose puck. Can't get the clear on the initial attempt on it. So I think it hit Sheehan in front. It did, yes. Yao to the circle. Across shot. Oh, how did that not? Did that go in? Yes, it did. It's a goal. A power play goal for the hat tricks. And who else? Dustin Gesso. How about nine goals in five games? And what a blast that was. What a wicked one timer. Gesso from Richards. Richards made the pass. And I mean, that thing came in and out so fast. Wow. And that's why you're like, oh, how did that not go in? It, it was in and out so fast. That's how hard Jesso hammered it into the back of the net and back on out. I really thought that that had drawn metal for a second, except I didn't quite hear the typical sound that you would get if it hits, hits the iron. It's... A, such a wicked shot. What a 
what an opening to his season for Dustin Jesso. Yeah, it's been unreal. He's he's easily the most productive player of the season so far for the half. Oh, I, I mean, without question. Wow. And how about Luke Richards a minute after we said, you know, after he gets stoned on a good scoring chance, and we talk about, oh, he doesn't have a point in three games, makes a beautiful pass for that one-timer. Man, we should say that about all the guys yeah. that immediately score. A positive case of the broadcaster's jinx. Yeah. Mammoth still looking for more. Rocco shot, puts it off the side of the net. Kodiak, white duck, hasn't played a ton. He's out there now. Venstrom has played a lot of this game, actually. Yeah, and played well. He's been very noticeable out there, much more involved offensively than he was his first couple games. Still looking for his first point with the hat tricks. 12.41 to go at the stoppage and play. It was for an offsides. So the goal came at six minutes of the third period. It is Dustin Gesso's ninth of the season already. And as Chris pointed out, just his fifth game played. Nine goals, his second of the night. And it's a power play goal and the hat tricks are now two for five on the man advantage. So their power play has come through for them here in the later stages of the game. And outside of that one extended five on three power, uh, power play sequence for Elmira, a penalty kill has done their job okay. Kuznetsov, turnover, shot, save made, it trickles in! Seven to four for the hat tricks. Kuznetsov gets himself on the board. Hey, remember when we were saying it was a quiet night for Kuznetsov? <laughs> so much for that. That is Dimitri Kuznetsov's third goal in three games since rejoining the Hattricks. He made a beautiful read. He, he was like a free safety in, in football. He was at center ice. He picked it off and then skated into the offensive zone on right wing, got to the top of the circle, and not a good goal allowed by Proudlock. He should have made that save but Kuznetsov was able to squeak it through the pads. A huge unassisted goal there for Dmitry Kuznetsov. And the Hattricks are back up by three, seven to four. Gonzalez retreats into his own end of the rink, looks for somewhere to go with it as McDonald. Lugo just tips it before it hits the blue line. Racing down to see if we can make a play on it. 12 minutes and change left to go here in the third period. Two quick goals for the hat tricks here in the third period. Two back-to-back, -back really fast together goals. As Richards, terrible bounce. Crowdlock is yeah, out he, of his net and down. Yeah, well, he up. fell down because of such a crazy bounce. That's been happening a bunch of times throughout all the games here. These corners are just kind of ruthless. Yeah, if you're a goalie, not your friend. Jared Yao winds up, shoots it, he puts it wide. Back to settle it down. And looking for some place to go with it. And yes, they, they put the scoring up on it. It is an unassisted goal for Dmitry Kuznetsov. And yeah, but again, you yeah. know, like I said, he read it he's like a free safety, you know, and, and he read the quarterback's eyes and he broke on that puck before it was passed, before it was off the stick of the defenseman. It's a great read by Kuznetsov. Thrown up to the Elmira bench. Maybe thinking that Jesso was going to stay on the ice. He doesn't. Coming up on the halfway mark of the third period. And game was close at the start of this period. And Hattrick's offense really woke up. And, and again, you know, this could have gone one of two ways, right? You know, Elmira starts the period on the power play, an extended power play. 245 worth of a power play, but the Hattricks killed it off, and really that set the momentum back their way. And then the goals from Gesso on the power play and Kuznetsov at even strength, and the lead back up to three. Mammoth gather, sit on the red line and retreat. Scal tried to have it forward for Isaiah Crawford. Flutters up onto Wilson, who smartly decides to cover it up, and we have exactly 10 minutes left to go in the third period. Two goals for the Hattricks.
came at six on the dot at 7.30, a minute and 30 apart. We'll get our media timeout right at 10 minutes. Brief pause back in a little bit from the Danbury Ice Arena here on Danbury Hat Tricks YouTube channel. Decker Tool Rental is the official full-service equipment rental shop, providing a complete line of quality equipment to all types of contractors, tradesmen, and do-it-yourselfers. Visit them today at 84 Federal Road in Danbury or on the web, DeckerToolRental.com. Three on two right off the face-off. Abdella trying to dish it outside for Ole Venstrom, runs it into the end boards. Venstrom muscling it on. It sits in the goalie crease and smartly covered up by Proud Luck. And of course, these same two teams get after it tomorrow night right here at Danbury Arena, seven o'clock puck, puck drop as the Hattricks will play host to the Mammoth. And then a little bit of a break in the home schedule, four straight road games for the Hattricks before they return home the Thursday after Thanksgiving, or the Thursday, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. I was going to say Thursday is that Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not the smartest guy. That's okay. Oh, puck springs free. Venstrom trying to hack at it. Sits against the end boards. Venstrom wanted it for Lugo. McDonald walks this on, tried to put it in front, and this will run away. Wilson's going to fly out, try and clear this aside. This is not going to be icing. That's a very aggressive play by that Wilson. Was, that was aggressive. I, I, I really have uh, the PTSD from seeing my goaltenders do that for teams I've cheered for as Muscal puts this over the crossbar. I have PTSDs from goalies stepping out to try and make plays and it very not working. I'm not a Devils fan who got to see Martin Brodeur do that stuff and have it work out almost every time. Yeah, yeah. Circle Sheehan shot. Put it, wow, that's a wicked ripper. Yeah, blocker save and up into the netting there. That was a good shot by Sheehan on the rush. I've been impressed with him too. You know, you know we, we mentioned how, uh, you know, Xavier Abdella joins the team after starting the, uh, the season in the, in the Southern Pro League. Well, that's where Sheehan came from as well. Um, had a tryout there, didn't make the team, came back here to the FPHL. And you can tell he's, he's a player. He's got good smarts, goes to the net. He's got good skill. And he's, you know, been pretty much getting on the score sheet, you know, prior to today in three or four games as a Danbury Hatcher. Sneaks out of the glove hand. Jesso looks to turn and generate some more offense. Richards, back that. Jesso gets on top of this out in front. Backhander scores! How about an exclamation mark? For the hat tricks. Wow! Sheehan! What an unbelievable finisher! Well, there you go. Like I said, Sheehan, kid can play. That's a great feed by Jesso. Really, that's a two on O down low behind the defense. And Sheehan takes the pass in front. He just calmly goes to the backhand and roofs it over the goalie. And now the Hattricks lead is up to four. They lead at 8-4 with 8.08 to play. What an unbelievable sequence of scoring and just wow. This team, somehow eight is not the most. Two on one, Ruiz to Kuznetsov, save made. Thought, he thought that, uh, that Proud Luck was gonna be moving too far. He put it right on towards the middle of the net and caught Proud Luck right as he was cutting across. Gordy Bennell chips his way on. 7.40 left to go in regulation time. Assisted by number 22, Dustin Jesso. 
Gesso with the assist. Yep, and Richards gets his second helper of the period. Yeah. What a wicked, wicked lineup that they have. You walked into the season thinking that the Benel Ruiz pairing would be your top offensive pairing, and then Gesso and Richards have been just I mean, different. They, yeah, they've been outstanding. That's what's going to, in the long run, going to make the hat trick so difficult to play against is the quality of their depth in their lineup. By the way, Gordy Bennell has two goals tonight as well. Right, Gordy's got two, Ruiz has three points, Gesso two goals, three points. Now Richards has a couple assists. Who do you give the stars of the game to? There's so many people to choose from. That is a, that's a good question. We'll have time to deliberate that yeah. as we... I'm sure we'll figure it yeah. out. We're not quite... It's 8-4 with 6.43 left to be played in the third period. And this really did have a chance of going the wrong direction for the hat tricks. They kill off the penalty successfully to start the frame. Face off right at center ice. Gonzalez will put this across. He'll receive it back. Gonzalez wants it forward. This is tipped by Richards right at the line. And stick to side. Fans are getting agitated about something away from the puck. Yeah, it was it was behind the play. It was uh, Sheehan and Leeson were together pushing and shoving. And you see they're still talking to each other now, chirping at each other. And Leeson invited, or excuse me, Sheehan invited Leeson to go. And then Leeson just skated away. And now, you know, a little bit more commentary taking place on the ice. Well, and Luke Richards is flapping his hand together, his gloved hand, saying, keep talking, keep talking, keep chirping. Look at the scoreboard. Yeah. <laughs> these, that's the thing about this Hattricks team is every single one of these guys is more than happy to express their opinion on the hockey situation going on in front of them. <laughs> I enjoy that about this group of guys. Akos couldn't do much with this. Kuznetsov. McDatton forward. Ruiz. Just to Ole his man. Bunnell. Didn't quite get it to the right ah, hand. Just slipped. Slipped off his stick, yeah. Kuznetsov interrupts the Elmira rush. Mammoth. Flipped in. Wilson with the stop. Dowler. Stapled into the boards, muscles along, and he ultimately comes away with the puck. And hadn't had a great offensive night, but he's shown that he can do a lot of different things defensively in his own end. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, first and foremost, he's got to be a defenseman yeah. and play well in his own end, and he is that. Big dude, hard to move, hard, you know, long reach, wins a lot of puck battles that way. Tristan Mock to Venstrom, shot, save. Tristan Mock has shown some yes. wicked cuts. Yeah, absolutely. Good puck handler, good skater. And he set up Benstrom there, and that, that's probably the best shot we've seen from Benstrom, yeah. you know, since he's joined the hat tricks. You just hope that Benstrom can get rewarded because eventually one of these shots has got to go down. Yeah, but this is, the you know, uh, the most that we've seen out of him uh, from an offensive side of his game. Maybe just getting more comfortable with his surroundings, his new team. Spent most of his career overseas in Europe in his native Sweden. And come out to the North American game. That's offsides. That's kind of blatant as well. We'll take our final media time out of the period. Brief pause back in a little bit for the final stretch between the hat tricks and the man.
8 4 the score in favor of the hometown Danbury Hattricks trying to stay perfect here at the Danbury Ice Arena. Chris Lynch, Jim Cerny, we'll call with you here this evening. Tristan Mock runs his man down, Oli Venstrom. Back to Mock. Tries to work this on, it sits behind the net, which clearly comes off its moorings and we'll get a stoppage in play. <laughs> that has also uh, happened quite a bit this season and, and in this case, Proudluck lost his mask too. He was flopping around in his crease and net comes off the stanchion, the mask comes off his head. Uh, again, no harm, no foul. And we'll get the face off, I believe to the left of Proudluck. Danbury now out shooting Elmira 34-24. You know, as we figure out, you know, before this game ends, we'll figure out who the three stars are. You know, in that first period, who was really good was Brian Wilson. He won't be a star yeah. in this game. He ends up allowing four goals. Uh, you know, certainly not all his fault by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, he played a pretty big role here in the third period. Seven saves at the start of the period when it was still a one-goal game. A scal walks in, shot goes into the protective netting over top, and a couple of kids go chasing after the puck as is their, you know, purpose in life as children at a sporting <laughs> event. <laughs> uh, 419 left here in the third period. This has been a very choppy game. Like the early part dominated by Danbury. A lot of the back end of the, of the first period, Elmira started to wake up. The second period, for a lot of it, Elmira ran the show. Then the penalty kill happens, and the game completely flips on its head. Yeah, absolutely. Mock, Venstrom on his hip. Mock gets around. Mock, shot, saved. Tristan Mock has afterburners, like, very few on this team, man. Yeah, he is quick. We're now under four minutes to go. Atrix trying to sew up. Is presently a dominant eight to four margin. Yep, and trying to, you know, pad their lead in the Empire Division. Actually, atop the league right now are the Danbury Hattricks. Trying to keep Elmira winless. And the Hattricks also trying to remain perfect at home. A win tonight, and they'd be 5 0 oh, 0 on home ice. One of those being an overtime victory against Binghamton. Yep. Here comes Dowler. We'll just leave it and hop out. Because Nets off pursuing from behind. It probably got it away before any mess could happen. Chipped up. Coming up on the final three minutes of the third period. Abdullah will settle behind. Of all the players who have been impressive, Abdullah is one who has impressed without scoring a point. Yes, yeah. Slalom. Yeah, he's had a solid debut. He can handle himself. He can skate and he can move. And skating prowess is especially desired out of defensemen. 2.35, the time left. Good check thrown. Gesso. Gesso with the hit. Yao tried to put that on. He hit Sheehan instead. White Duck will get on top of this from the red line. Knife Dawn, net bouncing puck. Loose still. And Proud Luck finally covers that up. Terrible pinballing sequence on him. Yeah, that was, that was rough. But it, it worked out and he was able to hold on to the puck. So again, these same two teams tomorrow right here at Danbury Arena. And then, you know, then it's on the road for the Hattricks next weekend. They will be in Michigan to play Motor City Friday and Saturday night. Then on Wednesday the 23rd before Thanksgiving, they'll be in Binghamton for a 6 o'clock start. The Friday after Thanksgiving, Hattricks will be in Elmira against these Mammoth before returning home the next night, the Saturday after Thanksgiving. A home game against the Carolina Thunderbirds. It's an upstate New York swing right around Thanksgiving a after a very long trip to Michigan. Mammoth looking for more offense, winds up shot. Lugo blocks it with his stick. Somehow that thing didn't break. Yeah. 
The circle shot save made by Wilson and one of his better saves in the back end of this game. That was a really good save. I, a really good deflection by Parker Muscal in front, seeking his fourth goal of the night. And he got a perfect deflection. You know, he's probably about eight feet in front of Wilson there. And Wilson handled the redirection well and no rebounds. So doubly good job there by Wilson with a minute 47 to play. And at this point, you're just trying to finish out what has been a successful night. It was a great crowd here at the Danbury Ice Arena. The shot will be blocked aside. Yao has to flip it along the boards. Oh, no. Oh, Yao is down. And Tristan Mock is going after Matthew Bazarin. Yeah, and Luke Richards is in there as well. Oh. Oh, what a mess. That's the very last thing you ever wanted to see happen. Yeah, late in the 8-4 game, a game that you're salted away with the win and, you know, really one of your top defensemen, a kid that's really emerged. Richards is angry. Yep. Patrick should be angry at that. And Richards is actually being ushered to the dressing room right now. Dowler is having some words with the Elmira bench. Boy, boy, talk about a hit that you just did not have to lay. It's an 8-4 game, a minute and 37 left to go in that game. Oh boy, this is, uh, Jared Yao is getting to his feet and he's moving under his own power. That's a very good sign. Hunched over, but he's gliding off himself. That's good. That is good, but I mean, you really, really hate to see that. Yeah. And it looks like Mock is getting cleaned up by the trainer as well. He might have gotten a little cut when had that, you know, kind of brief altercation. Looks around his nose or in his mouth area. Not that big a deal, but now Brendan Dowler standing at the red line is really yelling at somebody on the bench. It looks like he and Isaiah Crawford yelling at each other. And I believe the official has thrown Crawford out of the game. He's, He's guiding, the he, other official's guiding Dowler away as well. Yeah. Boy, howdy. Yeah, yeah, the official is pointing at Crawford and telling him to leave the bench, and he's not leaving. And now Dowler puts his stick up to salute the crowd as he heads to the locker room. Richards was waiting there with him as well. Richards is going out as well. Boy, everyone's trying to get home early. What a mess. Yeah. We have a minute and 37 seconds left to go in regulation time of this one. Let's see officials running through the penalties, trying to figure out who's going to get what. Frankie McClendon having some conversation. You know, he's the backup goaltender tonight. And just having some conversation with some of the Mammoth players. Of course, Frankie came off the bench last weekend and got himself into a little altercation as well. Yes. Uh, the when the game was over, that big melee after the game-winning goal in overtime. Yeah, both backup goaltenders got into it. Got they, himself a five-minute major and a 10-minute uh, misconduct. After the game, the game was, was done. the game was over. <laughs> exactly. What a wild sport. Oh, well, Frankie is much more calm right now, I would say. Yeah. He's letting everyone else mill about and be a bit miffed and annoyed so there is up on the board a five minute major to Bizarin I don't see Bizarin anywhere on the bench either yeah well if it's a yeah it's probably a five minute charging major and was yeah. probably tossed and of course the two hat tricks who left to the locker room or at least like they're just outside the glass. Oh, yeah. Richards and Dowler have not actually gone back to the locker room. It's a very long walk. Yeah. And, you know, they want to be out on the ice to celebrate with their teammates, presumably when the 8-4 margin holds up in the next minute 
and 23 seconds. It's a five minute major penalty against Bazarin. And Billy McCreary giving an opportunity to guys who typically aren't on the power play. So Lopez is out there, White Tuck is out there. It's a good call by the coach. Lopez up top, White Duck shot not there. Lopez shot just trickles a little bit wide. Oh man, that would have that would have blown the roof off this place. Mock tried to leave it. Now Myra will clear this the opposite end of the rink. Final 40 seconds of tonight's game. And what can only be described as a smashing success for the hat tricks. A big crowd for military appreciation night. Eight goals up on the board. You get 38 shots on net and eight of them go in. Many different guys chipping in. Tristan Mock who had one of the highlight goals of the season. Johnny Ruiz with three points. Dustin Jesso with three points. Gordy Bennell with two goals. A successful night for the Danbury offense. They will just let the puck sit back here, and that is that. The Danbury hat tricks stay perfect here at the Danbury Ice Arena. They win tonight's game at eight to four. And we got another altercation in the aftermath. And yeah, Johnny players, players coming together there. Who is that? Is that? Johnny McDonald's? Yeah. McDonald's barking at some guys. And the officials are just telling everybody <laughs> to go back to their own side of the ice. And, and maybe more importantly, Johnny Ruiz, in the middle of it all, telling his teammates, go back to our end of the ice. Yep. Let Elmira get off the ice, and then we're gonna go celebrate at center ice with the Litchfield Distillery Barrel. One of the best traditions. Wow. My favorite tradition. <laughs> As a, uh, not just uh, consuming their fine products. <laughs> yes. So exactly. that part is very enjoyable as well. And let's see, who, who are they going to let pick up the barrel? Who's going to hoist the barrel? After the salute to the fans, who's going to get to? Gordy. And it's Gordy Bennell. Two goals. He hoists it up over his head, bench presses the barrel, and spins it. Awesome. Yeah, that's deserved. That's really deserved. And the Danbury Hattricks remain perfect on home ice. They are 5-0-0 at home. They are 6-0-1 on the season, the only team in the league without a regulation loss to this point. And the Elmira Mammoth, who gave it a valiant effort, certainly in that second period, to make this a one-goal game heading into the third, but they end up falling short in the third period. They are winless. They are now 0-8-1 in the first nine games of their inaugural season. Not for lack of effort, though. They have, I mean, Parker Mescal put up a hat trick and an assist for four points on yep. this game tonight. He's, he's good. Yeah. He can fly he can shoot it but again they're very top heavy yep they, they really everything runs through a couple players whereas you see Danbury the depth that they throw at you uh you know on all three lines plus their three defense pairs and uh you know now we get to our three stars Parker Muskell of Elmira was the third star yep and and well deserved Johnny Ruiz will be the second star of the game a goal and two assists and Dustin Jesso with two goals and an assist, including two, you know, including the big goal at the beginning of the third period here. He is the number one star, and that is just true to form for him because he has been unreal to start this season. 17 points already on the season in five games. That's a remarkable offensive start to his season. The Scarborough, Ontario native has been the hottest player in the FBHL. That's 17 points. I feel it needs to repeat that again. Five games. Yeah. That's not a, that's an MVP level pace. So, so here's the crazy thing, right? Dustin Gesso has a three point night tonight. I mean, you know, hockey players kill to have three point night. 
it actually dropped his points per game average down because he was averaging three and a half points per game coming in. That pretty much sums up what Dustin Gesso has done to start the season. And, uh, you know, he comes up big here tonight. And again, in the third period, a one goal game, he comes through and gets that big goal to give them a little cushion and route to a three goal third period for Danbury. Gesso, Kuznetsov, and Sheehan all scoring in the third period to put this game away, and Danbury wins it by the count of eight to four. I might count 10 different players contributed to the scoring and got in on the fun for the Danbury hat tricks. They get a lot of, and even guys who didn't get a point on the night, Ole Venstra, Kodiak yes. White Duck, Brendan Dowler, it's not like they skated poorly. They attacked well, they moved the puck beautifully. This team is performing wonderfully. Yeah, but again, there are things that they're going to clear up. They're, they yep. got to be happy that the power play came alive and was a big contributor in the win here tonight. Two goals. Two goals, including that huge goal by Gesso that made it 6-4. to four. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's a positive. Yep. I thought the penalty kill after they got beat on both ends of that 5-on-3, after that, the penalty came up big, in particular, Brian Wilson. Yeah. At, you know, here at the beginning of the third period. So, you know, those are good things. But again, they're not going to be happy about how they got sloppy in that second period, how they let a 4 nothing lead get whittled down to 5-4 before the period was over. So, again, not a perfect night for them. Still things to work on and improve on. But again, in the big picture, much more good than negative. Yes. for the hat-tricks once again tonight. Worth noting about Brian Wilson, he faced 25 shots, he stops 21 of them. And a couple of those shots were quite excellent, and he makes a couple of very, very nice saves. Yeah, you know, when it was a one-goal game, you know, he, he stops a breakaway, and then at the beginning of the third period, he gets pelted with seven shots during that power play. And I'm not saying they're all grade-A chances, there were some good chances in there, but the bottom line is, one goal game where your goalie can't make a mistake and he was perfect. And then that sets the stage. Gesso scores the power play goal and then they take it home from there. The hat tricks and the mammoth will be right back here tomorrow evening, seven o'clock puck drop here at the Danbury Ice Arena. It's gonna be a crowded building with Steve Hansen. Yes, of the actual Hansen brothers will be making an appearance here at the Danbury Ice Arena alongside of Doug the Thug as part of the Mustache Classic. And a big night here for November here at the Danbury Ice Arena. This is going to be a fun weekend. It, already a fun time for the Friday night game. The Saturday night promises be a good night as well. For my partner in crime, Jim Cerny, and for everybody with the Danbury Hat Tricks, I'm Chris Lynch. The final score here tonight, 8-4, the Hat Tricks win. Thank you so much for spending your evening with us. Please enjoy the rest of your night in comfort, peace, and enjoyment.